Your 2022 Mingus Marauders are on the air. Mingus Marauder Football is brought to you by Jones Ford Verde Valley, Arizona's best since 1970. State Farm Insurance, Jennifer Griffin. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Taylor Waste, service tailored to your needs. Rock Zoo Screen Printing, where clothing comes to rock. Longfellow Excavating, we dig your ideas. And Northern Arizona Healthcare, improving health, improving people. Your 2022 Mingus Broader Football is also... Welcome one and all here, Coconino High School, home of the Panthers. Nick Yatsenko's along with us. Sorry, a little technical glitch to get going here. Not uh, great power sources out here at uh, Coconino. However, we're going to see their football team run power, power, and power all night long. Hey, well, as we get into it, let's let's talk about weather and uh, altitude. This is the first time we've been playing in cold and, and high. Yeah, the Marauders have not seen that yet this season. Tonight at kickoff, 52 degrees. So Ooh. we're definitely going to need some jackets by the end of this thing. Uh, and I'm thinking before the first quarter, probably. <laughs> uh, nonetheless here, um, it'll be interesting to see how the Mingus Marauders uh, react to the cold and uh, to the altitude up here. And as we take a look at Mingus's last opponent, uh, Maryvale, uh, is now one in five. Payson is uh, five and three. They're still ranked right number twelve in three A. Independence got a second win, by the way. Nick, uh, they are two and four. Washington and Deer Valley are still looking for their first win of the season. They are zero and thirteen combined. And then Bradshaw last week, whew, they got to three and three by beating the Mingus Marauders by a score of forty-one to nothing. Coconino's path here to this game again, a lot like Bradshaw. They played a lot of hard competition. Yeah, seriously, not a loser team Coconino's played so Are you opened serious? it up with Blue Ridge. Blue yeah. Ridge is a great powerhouse 3A school. Now it's one lower division but Blue Ridge is always a powerhouse. Uh, they beat them 62 to 6 so handled business against Blue Ridge. Um, Coconino beat Arcadia 20 or uh, lost Arcadia 27-21 sorry. Paulston Butte another really good team going to be a playoff team for 4A lost to them by one point 29-28. So already Coconino in some really tight battles. Um, they beat Apache Junction Apache Junction right now ranked number 13 in the 4A division. So Coconino has beat some formidable opponents. And then uh, the most recent is going to be last week against Lee Williams. They lost 14 to 7. So low scoring game. And uh, obviously Lee Williams looked up the uh, the sorcery or the instructions on how to beat Coco because Coco's a pretty good school. Well, I actually I, I had a chance to talk to uh, Coach Klaus out here for Coconino. And he said that it was just one of those nights that nothing went well for Coconino. In fact, um, everything went well for Lee Williams. They were able to throw the ball against Lee William, or against Coconino, which was really good. They had three stops, three stops inside the 10-yard line against okay. Coconino. So, I mean, that's hard to do. Coconino is a power force, but they just couldn't finish drives, according to Coach Klaus. Uh, Passing-wise, uh, Lee Williams ended up 14 of 18, 169 yards, two touchdowns, one interception, only 113 yards on the ground against this Coconino team. Coconino only two for four. They only put the ball up four times during the, wow. in the game, which sounds a wow. lot like Mingus, yeah. by the way. And on the ground, 329 <laughs> rushing yards. <laughs> 
but couldn't find the end zone more than once. So it, it was one of those nights. Cooper French, their leading rusher, ended up with 159 yards on 23 carries. And so uh, that's really what it was all about. And what we are going to see from Coconino, unless things have dramatically changed, is it's going to be power left, power right, power left, power right. Oh, we're going to mix it up and go power right again. Yeah, these guys have always had a, a big offensive line and big running backs, too. Uh, and French has been in the position before. He played last year. Uh, last year, Coconino beat us 28 to 14. Uh, so kind of a close game. I mean, only two touchdowns. So you know, hope the Marauders use that as some fuel this week during practice. Well, Coconino's got a decent defense too, and and has for many years. And you and I were talking about how the fact Coconino is is switched from uh, what was a passing team a decade ago uh, and a passing offense to going to the uh, the double tight end wing T, very traditional wing T. And they've found a lot of success doing that. They have. A lot of success. I remember uh, back in 2007, 2008, you're right. They put the ball up in the air quite a bit. Um, and, boy, since they've transitioned to this power running game, uh, everything's been going Coconino's way. They've had a lot of winning seasons the last decade. Uh, so kudos to the Coconino staff. So last week against Bradshaw, Mingus ends up, I mean, at halftime, it was 14 to nothing. And then um, so many things just went wrong for Mingus in that particular game and just kind of fell apart. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Bradshaw ended up total yards, uh, I mean, over 355 total yards for Bradshaw. It was a very much a dog fight game on the ground, a lot of running. Uh, we only saw a couple huge pass plays back to back. And ironically enough, uh, Mingus didn't put any points on the board, but it was a couple 60 yard pass plays back, back and forth. Bradshaw had the first one, then Mingus turned around in the next series and had their own. Uh, but yeah, you're right, Jackie. The Marauders have got to find a way to get some more yardage. Uh, last week, they, they only broke 120 yards, and that is not going to get it done. Bradshaw found a lot of success of uh, not letting Mingus drive the ball anywhere. So this week, uh, hopefully the Marauders tuned up a little bit and ready to put some points on the board. Well, certainly so. Now, unfortunately, the, the game was actually closer than what the score would indicate. In, 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 in my opinion, because I went back and watched Verde Valley TV and uh, watched the YouTube channel and, and uh, looked at the fumble that was inside the five on the first drive by Bradshaw. That looked like that ball was out before the, the runner hit the ground. So if that had gone Mingus's way, Mingus recovers that fumble right there. That takes the first seven points off the board. Dirkleck playing safety in the last drive of the first half went, I don't know, 140 <laughs> feet in the air and, and almost came down with that interception. Had he come down with that interception, guess what? Bradshaw doesn't score at the right, end of the, right. the first half. It could be 0-0 going into the second half. Then if you take away some major oops, you know, a, a, a snap over the punter's head, a blocked punt, you take away those special teams um, snafus, and maybe it was a 14-7 game or a 21-14 or a 21-7 game, but it was certainly not a 41-0 game. No, great point. And when we get into region play, this is typically how the games are. You're right. I mean, a 42 to nothing, that's a huge point spread in Grand Canyon region games. We typically don't see that. Uh, these are much closer. Uh, as I'm anticipating tonight, it'll be closer. Look at, uh, I mean, your scores last week, 14-7 to seven, uh, was Coconino against Lee Williams. I mean, boy, what a dog fight on the ground. And you said, so almost a little bit of similarity between the games where Coconino just could not get a bounce going their way, let's say, and neither did Mingus last week. So both teams kind of looking to rebound. Well, I certainly agree with that. We're going to take a break here from Coconino High School. When we come back, we're going to look at uh, Coconino stats. We're going to look at Mingus season stats and match up the two squads here for tonight. Tonight's game will be back right after this. The right vehicles, the right people, the right price. Make Jones Ford of Verde Valley the right place to buy. Choose from our new in-stock Ford selection or custom order just the way you want it. Buy pre-owned with peace of mind with Jones Ford's lifetime powertrain warranty at no extra cost. Plus, drive a little, save a lot. Jones Ford is your tax advantage destination. So for the right vehicles at the right price, make the right choice. Jones Ford Verde Valley, family owned and operated for over half a century. Just off I-17 in Camp Verde. 
two things we can count on every year. A new set of tax rules and great weather here in northern Arizona. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, locally owned and operated by Lewis Rice since 1997, is here for you all year long. Your neighborhood Jackson Hewitt Tax Office will help you in all of your taxing situations. Electronic filing is always free with your tax preparation at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Get more in return. Call 1-800-234-1040 for an office near you. Starting in the late 1920s, Grandpa Gettle and his brothers laid the groundwork for what would become a family legacy. Almost 100 years and 100 patents later, Gettle's High Desert Mechanical continues to raise the bar of quality heating, cooling, and plumbing products and services in the Verde Valley. Call Gettle's High Desert Mechanical Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing at 567-2200 or online at gettleshdm.com. Providing solutions for your comfort. Don't settle. Get Gettle's and go Marauders. I'm Chris. And I'm Tandy, owners of Taylor Waste. We're homegrown in the Verde Valley and nearly your last local choice. We want to be your first choice for residential and small business garbage service. Get a free month service when you make the switch to Taylor Waste. And enjoy monthly service as low as $16 per month. Visit TaylorWaste.com for more information. Or to start service, call Taylor Waste at 649-2662. Taylor Waste, service tailored to your needs. Yavapai College has many degree and certificate programs to get you on track to a rewarding, well-paying career in a variety of industries such as healthcare, manufacturing, construction, elementary education, and art. Fall semester starts on August 15th, so there's still time to register. Visit us online today at yc.edu slash admission to connect with your future career. The Mingus Marauders come back to the field, but uh, before they did, the Coconino Panthers came out of their um, their tube and rushed out, and we didn't realize, but it is homecoming here for Coconino, and in the process, they made one gigantic dog pile right at about the 50-yard line, and um, uh, you made mention that looked dangerous. <laughs> it sure did. I, I wouldn't want to be on the bottom of it, really? although I think I found myself on the bottom of all the dog piles I've been in my life. So. Well, you, you know what they say. I mean, it, don't do anything fantastic and great if you can't handle the celebration. Right? Oh, I love it. I love it. So true. All right. So Coconino coming into uh, tonight's uh, 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 matchup here is, is has has definitely done just about everything, all of their damage on the ground for the cor course of this season. Well, we're going to get into our national anthem here in just a moment. The Mingus Marauders have come out to the far side of the field. We are on the home side of the field, and it's homecoming 2022 out here as they have our colors, and we have our honor guard right in the middle of the field at the 50-yard line. And here we go with our national anthem. By removing your hat and placing your right hand over your heart, veterans may render the hand salute. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem is performed tonight by the Panther Marching Band.
There we go, our national anthem performed by the Coconino Panther Band, and they did a fine rendition out here tonight. And speaking of the Coconino Panthers, uh, they, they've mainly uh, kept it on the ground here this year. Yeah, I really have, and I, I'll tell you, Jackie, their workhorse is going to be um, the, the French here, senior, and he's got uh, Cooper French, 843 yards on the season. He's played in each one of their games, so right there, that's going to be the workhorse. It's going to be French um, for the Coconino Panthers. Passing the ball, we're going to see Watson, who's a junior back there. Uh, boy, over six games. Watson is obviously their star quarterback. He's got a 97.3 QB rating. Um, he's uh, got uh, 50 attempts, 26 completions, 300 yards in the air. So six games, 300 yards, not a lot uh, thrown in the air. But you know what? He's over 50% throwing the ball, Jackie. So that's going to help your running game. Well, certainly does, and it certainly will as we get our teams out in the middle of the field as they're getting ready for the uh, coin toss out there. And um, we want to thank, uh, thank our sponsor for the coin toss, which is Jennifer Griffin. State Farm Insurance, proud to be a part of the Mingus Marauder broadcast. And, of course, she's been in the same location for over 35 years. Go Marauders, says Jennifer Griffin. In fact, you can stop by and uh, for all your insurance and financial needs at 545 South Main Street in Cottonwood, directly across from Walgreens, or you can check them out online at www.genismysfagent.com. All right, and awesome coin toss here, too. These guys are uh, ready to go. Jackie, look at the size of number 23 out there for the Panthers. Watson, you see him a lot. In, indeed, we will. In fact, uh, we want to say uh, the eye on the game is brought to us uh, by Reese's Tire. And our officials here tonight are going to be uh, James Gillespie, Mike Gillespie, uh, Brian Eckhoff, Nick Warring, and then Bennett Gillespie. we got, uh, I'm guessing, some family roots in the referees tonight. Ming is going to be kicking off to start off this game. And with our referees, the eye on the game, we want to thank Reese's Tire. Look for discounts, coupons, and rebates on tires, wheels, and automobiles. Motive services at Reese's Tire.com. And during October, you want to do Break for Breasts, where you're going to get uh, your discounts on your brake pads. And uh, of course, it, it works out to be a phenomenal discount on your brake service at Reese's Tire and Automotive Tire Pros. Plus, it helps out with the breast cancer awareness as well. And we're going to try to get updates, by the way, for the Bradshaw and Prescott game going on tonight. Yeah, battle of the uh, Prescott slash Prescott Valley area, and that's, I'll tell you, Jackie, the winner of that game, Prescott versus Bradshaw, is for sure going to have a inside track, as you would say it, right to the Grand Canyon region title, and that's so true. That's going to be a, a huge game uh, for Prescott and Bradshaw. Well, Mingus is going to be kicking off, going uh, right to left across your radio dial, and we're going to try to figure out... Who is going to be back out there for, looks like uh, J Jacob Klaus is going to be one of the deep guys for the Coconino Panthers. Camacho set up to kick off. Panthers wearing the black and the hard to read red numbers. Camacho puts a boot into it, right hand side, somewhat short. It'll be taken at about the 20 and moved up. However, we're going to get a whistle blown. Not exactly sure why or how. Yeah, not quite. Yeah, it looks oh. like the, maybe he had a knee on the ground when he got it. He may have actually called, trying to call off his player. He uh, may have put his arm in the air and called for a fair catch. I think you're right. You're so right. Really good eye on the game there from the referees. A very first uh, special teams play on the kickoff. All right. As we take a look at it, Cooper French is going to be the main running back. Enoch uh, Watson, number eight, will be the quarterback. The fullback is going to be Quinn Mickelson, who turned around and played some linebacker out there. Tight formation, actually. Look at this. They come out with two receivers to the near side, which is unusual. Quarterback steps back, looking to throw. Throws to the near side. It's more of a screen. Has a man. Gets through the middle. And then gets out to the outside. He's at the 40. He's at the 50. And then tackled out there by number seven. That's going to be Camacho. Or no, that's going to be uh, Xavier gets a hold of him. Yeah, and makes the tackle. Good effort there by Xavier. I mean, you gotta, you got to pursue really well. That's a, a great first play for the Panthers. And you know what? That's some good coaching right there, too, Jackie, to open it up. You're going to see the replay here. Isaiah Latham thinks he's got a free shot. 
at Watson back there, and he does not. That's a great screen play by Coconino. Real quick and out of the gate, going to the air, and now they line up tight, getting ready to uh, run the ball. Watson over center takes the snap, and it will go to the first man through, and uh, it will get tackled right up in the middle. Looks like Latham might get a part of the tackle, short gain, probably three. And that was uh, Mickelson on the carry. Mickelson, he's got some size to him, and I'll tell you, Jackie, that, that formation's crazy, man. Coconino's so tight in that power formation. Yeah, it's hard to figure out where they're going to run there so tight. If you think about it, I mean, where's the hole going to be if everybody lines up that tight? Second back through, finds a little bit of a lane, and Glassman gets a hold of him as well as Arnado. And it's going to bring it up to the 40-yard line, so it'll be third down and about four. Yeah, and that's a nice job by Makai Arnado and uh, Curtis Glassman out there. Not let Mickelson get any more than he did the play before, and the Marauders already defensively putting Coconino in a third down situation. Got a pull right in front of us here at Coconino. That's part of the problem being here at Coconino. Quarterback is in shotgun, takes a snap, pretends to hand it off, throws it, has a wide open receiver over the top, and Turkulak does tackle him, but inside of the three, number 11 with a gigantic catch out there. She's going to go for 36 yards. Yeah, nice, and that's Tyler Reagan. I tell you, that's a, a really nice catch. I mean, Tyler, way to just look over your shoulder. You're going to see the replay here on VVTV. Nice ball by Watson, and Reagan just looks over his shoulder. There it is, and how about Dirkleck with the extra effort? Not to let him in the end zone. I love it. He just snuck behind the Mingus Marauder defense there. Quarterback takes the snap, hands it off, and running up through the middle and getting tackled. A good tackle out there by Jones. And he is injured. Getting up and having trouble is number four. That's going to be Cooper French as he comes off limping on one foot. And that would be so costly Ouch. to Ouch. Coconino. Yeah, you, you don't want to see him limping. Hopefully, maybe he's just cramping up or something. But nice job, Ethan Jones, on that. And I'll tell you, that was right on the goal line. Looks like Ethan Jones uh, just getting his nose deep in there. First and goal from the three, maybe the two and a half. There's a snap, quarterback's going to keep it, dives through, and finds a lane into the end zone. It's going to be quarterback Enoch Watson for the touchdown. Yeah, boy, Watson's got some serious size to him, too. That's, that's just a great setup. I mean, you have your option. You can hand it off or take it in yourself, and Watson decides, you know what, I'm going to run this one in. He does for the two-yard touchdown, and the homecoming crowd is quite pleased out there. 9.02 left to go. Three minutes is what it takes. And uh, the home squad gets on the board here first. Lining up to go for it for two. Quarterback takes the snap, hands it off. First man through, drives his way. Did he get into it? Yes. Two-point conversion out there run by Quinn Mickelson. As a Coconino right off the bat, putting eight points on the board. Boy, that's um, a good first drive. They opened it up with a screen play. And the Otters will have a chance to answer. We're going to take a break. Lingus will get the ball back on kickoff when we return right after this. All Price Insurance on Main Street in Cottonwood is your local insurance provider for personal and commercial insurance. Call and compare 23 insurance companies for home, health, auto, RV, motorcycle, boat, or ATV. Specialty insurance and insurance bonds are no problem at All Price Insurance. Call or visit All Price Insurance today. And Coconino has got the 8 nothing lead. And now they're going to turn around and kick off. And kickoff is going to be... Pearson Watson, who will do the kickoff. 
Mingus has two men back, and it is a line drive kick. It is returnable from about the 10-yard line. Here goes Brulin. Brulin bounces to the outside, gets around one man, and gets across the 30. Decent return out to about the 31. Yeah, nice job, Brulin. I really like how he runs the ball, and he just catches that one and goes north and south immediately. Lowers the shoulder as he's about to get hit. And gives the Marauders some okay field position. They're going to have almost a 70-yard drive if they want to put uh, some a touchdown on the board. Let's see what they got in store. Well, Mingus is going to have to bring him back out and uh, figure out how to respond here very quickly. And uh, Mingus lines up in a wing formation. Quarterback under is Camacho. Camacho hands it off. It's going to be Durkalek. Durkalek finds his way through across the 40 and close to a first down. And then there is a foul as Latham got tangled up with one of the uh, Coconino Panthers out there. And we're going to try to find out what happens with that one. So if the run stands, it's close to a first down. We've got the... White Hat discussing it out there with the rest of his. How about Camacho crew? taking the snap under center right off the bat? We're, we're also, uh, they decided to throw a screenplay, and we haven't seen Camacho uh, all that much at quarterback, although we have for a few plays. He's got a 97 QB rating, and that penalty is going to help the Marauders out. Yep. So we're going to give him 10 on the run, and then there is going to be a 15 yard penalty added to the rest of it. How about that? Yeah, nice. And Dirkalek worked hard on that run, really. I mean, he's just a great runner. He, even when he was a quarterback, he, he just knows how to be shifty in there and find an open gap. Here we go, first and 10. The Mingus Marauders with the ball at the 45-yard line. They hand it off to Dirkalek. Dirkalek trying to get to the outside and is swung down. They should give him forward progress back to near the line of scrimmage. Looks like they may have him. This looks maybe like a one-yard loss there too, Jackie. I'm not quite sure. They didn't give him that full momentum, but nonetheless, Dirkalek tried to, you see the replay here, tried to bounce it to the outside. And you can just see Xavier there saying, oh man, cut it inside. So second and 12, the Mingus Marauders on the Coconino side of the field. However, 8.03, 8.02 left to go in the first quarter, trailing eight to nothing. Mingus comes out and they put two wings out wide and uh, looks like Camacho's gonna throw the ball, throws it downfield and a great defensive play intended for Jones out there and the safety came up and disconnected him from the ball. Yeah, really great defensive play there. And that looks like that's gonna be number three, Jacob Klaus. For for the Panthers and you're right if he doesn't uh, get his hands on Ethan Jones that could be a catch and a long run after that so good defense by the Panthers third and 12 Contreras out wide to the near side Camacho takes the snap and uh, runs to the near side looking to throw the ball stops up throws it has it downfield and that should be enough for a first down through across his body and finds Jones out there for the tight end and uh, he'll get about 18 on that one how about that I really love it nice job Camacho rolls out looks around at his options and finds finds him that's a that's a, a great play and I have a feeling he's going to find Jones all night well, Jones hasn't had a, uh, a completed pass or caught a pass in a couple of games. There's a snap out of the... Uh, oh, throw it to Dirklick. I don't know if he came down with it in bounds, but came out to the near side. Camacho out of the shotgun. Threw it quickly to Dirklick, and I don't believe that that... Oh, it is yeah, a catch. How about that? That's a great, great effort. Dirklick definitely bobbled that, but comes up with the big catch. So second and four now, the Mingus Marauders inside of the 25 down to about the 23 yard line. There is the snap and they run it up the middle and that's Arenado's territory. Let's see if he actually, yep, he comes up with the ball. We're gonna see if he gets a gain on it of about three, so third and one. A really good play calling, too. Really like to see Makai uh, take the handoffs. He's a great running back, and he's always going to try to at least fall forward for that yard, and that time almost gets the first down. Leaves the Marauders with a third and really, really short. Rulin comes in with the play. Tells everybody, hey, it's my turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? He wants in on this. Coach said, give me the ball. 
So far, nice drive. So Bruin wants in on it. Absolutely. Started at the Mingus Marauder 31. Now right at about the 20-yard line. And now we get a flag for delay of game. Ouch. Oh, yeah, that's going to that's gonna hurt, especially when you have a, a third and essentially inches. And you can just see some of the Marauders coaches with their hand on their head. I think they thought they had a few more seconds. So brings it back to the 23. So I guess it was at the 18-yard line. Camacho over center. Takes a snap and a pitch to the outside. And the ball is on the ground. Camacho ends up not able to get it. And the pitch to Dirkelecht ends up being a fumble and a turnover for the Coquino Panthers at their own 30-yard line. Oh, ouch, that one hurts for the Marauders. That's just a little bit of a miscue. I mean, it happens. That's a, a pitch to Dirkelec, and typically we see Dirkelec pitching the ball. So obviously a few more reps needed there, and Coconino's going to take over. Mingus had a great drive going. Uh, yeah. 5.57 left to go first quarter. Now trailing 8 to nothing. Now got to figure out how to get it done on defense. Tight formation once again. Man in motion. Quarterback pitches out to the outside, and uh, Mingus is able to cover it up, and here comes the flag, and that is in the area of potentially holding. Yep, that's what it looks like our, uh, our white hat is saying. It's going to be a hold on Coconino. Will help the Marauders out quite a bit. You can see the replay there. Couldn't quite see it, but nonetheless, nice job by Makai, Isaiah Latham getting in there. And that's how you draw those holding penalties is just make a nice move. Try to get to the quarterback as soon as you can. And it is declined by the Mingus Marauders because it is a tackle for loss for two yards. So that's going to bring up a second and 12. And yes, I am going to admit to it. I had to put the jacket on. It's okay, the player's got some warmers down there on the sidelines. I haven't seen that in a long time. <laughs> so second and 12 inside the 30 at about the 29, 28-yard line of Coconino. 5.33 left to go first quarter. Eight to nothing and a fake pitch. Quarterback looks to throw, puts it up in the air, has a man downfield. It's number three, Klaus, who gets tackled at the 10-yard line. And getting behind the defense once again are the Coconino Panthers. Are you kidding me? Wow, what a bomb by Watson. Man, this kid's got an arm for the Coconino Panthers. Look at that replay. That ball was in the air for a while. And boy, oh boy, Coconino oh, looking really, really strong right off the bat here, Jackie. Well, Klaus's first reception, I believe, and that one goes for 50 yards, and just like that, Coconino's back in the red zone here at the 12-yard line. What happened to running the ball? Yeah, here, we look at now we got that big power formation. Watson takes the snap, hands it off, up the middle. Mingus able to shove it back, but uh, gained inside the 10, down to about the 8, give him 3. Yeah, and that's what the Marauders are going to have to do for this heavy running team. They're already showing a lot of success through the years. So Marauders are going to really have to shut down that running game so they can just focus on passing. Coconino got stopped inside the 10-yard line three times last week against Lee Williams. Let's see if Mingus can do it once. Tight formation once again. Quarterback takes the snap, handoff, coming to the near side, following his blockers, close to the end zone, and stops short. A touchdown saving tackle out there for the Mingus Marauders, but that might even be enough for a first down. And I think it's going to be a first and goal from uh, just one yard out. Nice job by Makai. That's a good effort. Don't let him get in the end zone if you don't have to, especially, like you said, Jackie, if a team has stopped Coconino in that 10-yard line mark before, the Marauders, of course, watching film all week, have a chance to do it themselves. Now, Mingus is going to need a negative play here to make it work. Quarterback's in shotgun, takes the snap, hands it off, and it's going to be Klaus. Klaus coming around the corner and in for the touchdown. Yeah, and Klaus already showing how fast he is. He has stepped in uh, for Cooper French, who we haven't seen running the ball yet. Hopefully he's okay. He hobbled off a little bit ago uh, after that first drive. It was one of the first plays he was in there. And uh, Coconino looking uh, to go for the two-point conversion again. Well, they already lead eight to nothing here. Still first quarter action out there. 3.40 left to go. 
And they do line up for the two-point conversion. Same formation, Klaus in the backfield. There's a snap, nope, there's Klaus comes around the corner and follows his blocks into the end zone for the two-point conversion. 16 and nothing very quickly here in the first quarter here at homecoming at Coconino. Mingus has got to get, they're going to get the ball back. They're going to have to figure out how to get the offense going when we return after this. Starting in the late 1920s, Grandpa Gettle and his brothers laid the groundwork for what would become a family legacy. Almost 100 years and 100 patents later, Gettle's High Desert Mechanical continues to raise the bar of quality heating, cooling, and plumbing products and services in the Verde Valley. Call Gettle's High Desert Mechanical Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing at 567-2200 or online at gettleshdm.com. Providing solutions for your comfort. Don't settle. Get Gettle's and go Marauders. Back here at Coconino High School, Mingus has found themselves in a hole 16 to nothing. A high kickoff coming down to the near side, taken by the Mingus Marauders, looking for the sideline. Here goes Derkulak. Derkulak takes on one blocker. Oh, and they gets horse collared out of bounds. And thank goodness, jumps right back up without a problem, but he'll get across the 30 to the 31 yard line, so Mingus will start both of their drives from their own 31 yard line. Yeah, and it, kudos to the returns there, Dirk like that. I mean, boy, he was windmilled around uh, outside of the white line, I'll just say that. I said that he got a horse collar. There was no hand inside of the uniform. However, he got tackled by the neck, so let me, let me just kind of rephrase that. Here come the Mingus Marauders, Camacho, at quarterback, takes the snap, Dirk Leck on the sweep, cuts it in, finds some running room, and is able to gather up about five or six before he's tackled. Hey, I'm telling you, Jack Kellen, I'm really liking Dirk Leck on the ball here. He's already finding some success. He's great, great uh, quarterback when it comes to uh, not finding an open receiver and taking off running with it. And already tonight showing that he can be just as good running that ball at a, uh, at a tailback position. He lines in the backfield along with Arnado. Uh, man in motion and ooh, Arnado goes straight up, gets nothing. There was no hole there. Yeah, it was, it was just straight up and straight down and the guy typically falls forward for that, uh, that inch. I don't think they gave it to him that time. It wasn't there. So this is a whole different look for the Mingus Marauders. Got Dirkalek in the backfield, Camacho at quarterback. And Latham, did you notice that? Latham is now at the center position. The left tackle is where Bowers is. Wing formation once again, there is the snap. Dirkalek going to the right, keeps going to the outside and is able to pick up the first down and get out of bounds. However, we got a man down and getting up slow is Arnado. And he will limp a little bit back to the huddle. He's going to stretch it out there. He does not want to come out. It's very clear. He's just kind of kicking it out. And yeah, Jackie, just to touch on your last point with a few of the change-ups here. Uh, there you go. Marauders coaching staff changing it up a little bit after losing our first Grand Canyon region game to Bradshaw. Marauders come out with a little bit of a different look, and I like it. Hyatt comes to the near side, the lone receiver. And he got to get set, young man. There you go. There's the snap and the handoff, and Arnado runs right into a tackle. He'll pick up two, get up to the, about the 45-yard line. Approaching the two-minute mark here in the first quarter, Mingus's first drive ended up stalling out on a pitch that went for a fumble at about the 30-yard line of the Coconino Panthers. Yeah, talk about taking the, the wind out of the sails there. Marauders had a, a great opening drive, and turnovers uh, kind of cursed that. One receiver to the near side, wing formation once again. Camacho has a man in motion, and they're going to hand it to him, and the, it's Brulin. Brulin will shimmy his way forward, pick up a couple, and that's going to bring up a third and medium out there, maybe a third and five. 
Yeah, it's third and definitely manageable for the Marauders. They've uh, found success already on this drive and their first drive, so just kind of key on what's working. and. Uh, I, I like to see uh, Isaiah Latham, the big guy in center. You know, he's been he wreaking havoc at the tackle position um, and defensive end position for the Marauders, and now he's in the uh, shotgun formation, snapping the ball. And in a spread formation are the Mingus Marauders. Shotgun, Camacho steps back, looks to throw, throws, and it's picked off! Going the other way are the Cocaino Panthers and tackled at about the 25-yard line. All right, and that hurts another drive where the Marauders had already gotten a first down, so moving downfield, and boy, just an interception there. I don't think Camacho saw him at all. There's your instant replay. He did not. He threw that uh, really, really fast. So it was actually a really nice throw. Uh, it just literally, literally hits Quinn Mickelson right in the numbers. It does indeed. So unfortunately, Camacho, Mingus has now had two turnovers on their first drives. A fumble going back to Coconino. Now an interception which sets up Coconino at the Mingus Marauder 25 yard line with 52 seconds left to go in quarter number one and a 16 to nothing lead already. Now a spread formation out here for Coconino. There's the snap. Quarterback steps back. He will throw the screen. And it is shut down pretty easily by the Mingus Marauder. Short gain out there as uh, Reagan gets targeted with the screen. It does go forward for about three. Yeah, and just great football IQ from Makai Arnuato on that last play. Makai sees it's a screen, and he's running out to the flat there where the wide receiver is. He's got two blockers there, and Makai runs all the way around him and then chases Reagan down. So really, really nice defensive play. And still, just to uh, touch base on uh, Cooper French, Jack, he, he is still on the sidelines for the Panthers. Spread formation once again, and that would be a huge blow here to the Coquino Panthers. He is their number one all-time rusher here. And a handoff going up the middle, finding his way through and making his way to the end zone. A 22-yard dash for the touchdown, and Coquino extends the lead out there. And that is going to be at number 15 on the run. Is that, is that Patton? Riker Patton sure is. And getting the junior involved, the Panthers are. And boy, untouched on that one too, Jackie. A Coconino Panthers offensive line. You're going to see the replay here. I mean... And that's going to be the previous play, but that, that last running touchdown there by Coconino, untouched. Just untouched. And... Boy, there it is there, and it's just a scamper from 15 yards out. And Marauder's going to have to tighten up defensively. Going for two once again. Already uh, leading 16 to nothing, now 22 to nothing. There is the snap, handoff up the middle and getting in for the touchdown. Uh-oh. That is going to be number 10. That's Mickelson with the two-point conversion, and that looked too easy. We'll take a break. Mingus down 24 to nothing here as the first quarter comes to an end. We're going to take a break. Second quarter coming up right after this. Two things we can count on every year. A new set of tax rules and great weather here in Northern Arizona. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, locally owned and operated by Lewis Rice since 1997, is here for you all year long. Your neighborhood Jackson Hewitt Tax Office will help you in all of your taxing situations. Electronic filing is always free with your tax preparation at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Get more in return. Call 1-800-234-1040 for an office near you. Starting in the late 1920s, Grandpa Gettle and his brothers laid the groundwork for what would become a family legacy. Almost 100 years and 100 patents later, Gettle's High Desert... Well, the Vingas Marauders find themselves in a hole here as the second quarter starts to begin 24 to nothing as the Coconino Panthers have scored, well, they scored on their first drive and then they scored on two turnover drives. So they've got 16 points on turnovers for the Mingus Marauders or against the Mingus Marauders. There's a kick popped up short, taken far side, fumbled, and then covered up 
on the far side. That might be Dirk Leck, and that's going to leave the Mingus Marauders pretty deep inside of their own 20. Yeah, and I just, uh, boy, Marauders got to clean the turnovers up. They've been plagued so far. They've had success driving the ball downfield and then turnovers. So they can clean it up. Marauders got to put some points on the board. As like you said, Jackie, Mingus just find themselves in a hole. Uh, and it's the very start of the second quarter. Coconino with a demanding 24-0 lead. 16-yard line. 16-yard line of the Mingus Marauders will be the starting position. Spread formation, go the Mingus Marauders. One safety out there. That's going to be Klaus as the safety defensively. Coming this way is Camacho. Camacho looks, throws, and uh, tries to get it to Brulin. Throws a little bit too far to the outside. He's unable to get his hands on it. Second and ten. Yeah, and I like the uh, the air game the Marauders are showing. Camacho really looks like a, a, a set quarterback back there in the pocket. And I think on that last play, he was really trying to look for Ethan Jones. And Ethan just wasn't looking back quick enough, so he went to Brulin. And I'll uh, try again here. Brulin was definitely open. The uh, buffer was a, a, a good 10 yards. And Mingus will go into the... Uh, spread formation. By the way, Dixon is now wearing number 45 out there here tonight. Camacho takes the snap. He's going to run it himself and tries to get to the outside. Gets tackled. Tackle out there is number 11. That's Reagan. Let's see how, uh, how he did on... It's going to be third and ten. They're going to say that he just got back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was a lot of running there. Mario Camacho playing quarterback for the Marauders. And, boy, he made one man miss, made two man miss, but he couldn't make the third man miss. And Coconino is all over it. Third and ten now for the Mingus Marauders. Dixon is wearing 45 out there because unfortunately Leckington will be out for the rest of the season with a knee injury. Suffered last game against Bradshaw. There's the snap. Quarterback throws and it's going to be behind his intended receiver. That'll bring up fourth down. So Mingus will be in a punt situation at their own 16 yard line. And uh, last game against Bradshaw when Dirk Leck was able to get the punts off, he had great yardage on his punts. Um, when he couldn't get him off, it looked really bad. Yeah, you're not kidding. We, and I remember talking about that one. It was either going to go great or <laughs> go terrible. Uh, so we'll see what the Marauders special teams has in store tonight. You see Dirk Alec back there, ready to boot this one downfield. And boy, do the Marauders need him to kick it real far here. Yeah, about 70, 72 yards would be nice. There's the snap, clean snap. Kick is up. It's going to be short, near side, and it'll take a bounce. And it'll go out of bounds, right at about the 43-yard line. And Klaus picks it up to run it down, but once it's touched, it's not, you can't move it forward, but good idea, good thought. Might be just stretching his legs there, I think. Is that what it was? Uh, I think so. I haven't seen that, so. And boy, Klaus and Mickelson uh, right now, the, the horses for Coconino as uh, we still see Cooper French not in the game, so hopefully he's going to be okay. Um, you hate to see that. He's been such a great running back for the Coconino Panthers. Interesting enough here, um, Watson, quarterback for Coconino, is 4 for 4 to start the game. 123 yards. Wow. He's got receptions or pass completions of 34, 36, 50, and <clears throat> 3. Okay, two men in the backfield here. Different formation. Quarterback steps back, looks to throw, has a little bit of pressure, and he will get sacked out there. Glassman gets the sack, and we have got flags in the backfield and flags near the 50, near the sideline. We have a whole host. We got a holding call on this side. Now let's see what this flag is near the 50-yard line. It might be offsetting by the way that they're discussing it. Let's see. Holding against Coconino. And that is going to be declined. So Glassman is going to get the sack. Yeah, nice job by the Marauders defensively. Curtis Glassman, way to get in the backfield. And this is a dogfight on that line of scrimmage. Coconino's got a lot of size. And Glassman able to get in there and take Watson down. Eight yards lost on the sack by Glassman. Brings up a second and 
Looks like about 18. Same formation, quarterback takes it, is gonna pitch it to the near side, and Mingus has him and then does take him down. Jones gets him by the legs, and Glassman finishes it up. And there's going to be a gain of about three. Yeah, Nicholson's got some size to him too, and Curtis Glassman on another tackle there. Almost looked like a suplex at the end of that tackle. He says, all right, you got his feet. I'm going to take him down. You're going to see the replay here. Quinn does a nice job. He hits the hole real hard. And then uh, Curtis Glassman, nice, nice finish at the end there. Coconino taking their time in the huddle. Third and long, third and about 14 from uh, their own 48-yard line. Tight formation, man in motion, and quarterback's going to keep it. Looks to go downfield. He gets pressured and finds his man downfield. Machado makes the tackle, but not before a long first down and then some. Yeah, and that's just another open receiver for the Panthers. I'll tell you, Jackie, all season long, we've been praising the DBs on how tight a coverage they've been playing and how well they're playing. And I'll tell you, Coconino has found the spots in our secondary tonight. Well, they're getting behind the secondary, which is um, what, what you certainly can't have happen. So first down just outside the red zone, and here comes the run. Getting to the outside and finally tripped up. A good touchdown saving tackle is going to be out there by Machado. And Machado almost with a shoestring tackle, but sometimes that works. He had another safety. I think Senna was out there ready to take him down. If Machado couldn't, and boy, Marauders, it's a huge defensive stand here. Coconino in the red zone again right now. And boy, it would be just crucial for the Marauders to come up with a huge stop here. Well, Mingus definitely needs that because they have not been able to stop Coconino as of yet. Tight formation. There's the snap and quarterback's gonna throw, throws the ball, has a man. Touchdown. Oh, the Panthers really flexing their passing game. How about that? Jackie, I did not think I'd say that at all tonight. And uh, Coconino show, showing that they can go right back to their passing days and find a lot of success. Watson has been on target all night so far, and the Panthers are at this point pouring it on in the beginning of this. That is Bridger French with the 22-yard touchdown reception out there. And this one's getting out of hand quickly. 30 to nothing, 8.20 left to go in quarter number two. No stoppage in play there. Looks like a little uh, equipment adjustment. Set up for the two-point conversion and the run into the end zone as the two-point conversion is good. And it's going to be 32, 32 to nothing, 8.20 left to go. Quarter number two will return to Coconino after this. The right vehicles, the right people, the right price. Make Jones Ford of Verde Valley the right place to buy. Choose from our new in-stock Ford selection or custom order just the way you want it. Buy pre-owned with peace of mind with Jones Ford's lifetime powertrain warranty at no extra cost. Plus, drive a little, save a lot. Jones Ford is your tax advantage destination. So for the right vehicles at the right price, make the right choice. Jones Ford Verde Valley, family owned and operated for over half a century. Just off I-17 in Camp Verde. Klaus got the two-point conversion, making it a 32 to nothing game here with 8.20 left to go here in the first half. Kick will go to the near side, far side, and it'll be taken by the Mingus Marauders. It's going to be Dirkelec. Dirkelec trying to get to the near side. He's got blockers and will step out of bounds somewhere around the 25-yard line. Thought he might have a chance to cut that one back, and there is a flag on the sideline and lots of clapping by the home squad from Coconino. I wonder if that might be a verbal penalty. Yeah, you gotta be really careful. I, I really respect uh, that the referees have put that into effect where you cannot say, like you said, Jack, you can't be verbal. You can't be verbally abusive. You can't talk any smack down there. I'm trying to really encourage sportsmanship. 
And it looks like that's exactly what it's going to be because we didn't see any late hits or anything like that. No. Nope. So the Marauders may be just showing a little bit of frustration down uh, down big here at Coconino High School, 32 to nothing. Well, that's going to be half the distance. So it'll end up being a seven and a half yard uh, penalty out there as the ball now gets set at about the 12 yard line. Mingus goes into a spread formation. Once again, Camacho at the quarterback position throws the screen coming to the near side. Brulin is covered up and doesn't catch it. They call it an incomplete wow. pass. I think the Marauders just got really lucky on that one. I think Brulin caught that, had it up on his shoulder pads. He couldn't quite bring it in. And one of the Panthers just took it away. So I, I, I'm thinking uh, the Marauders may have just gotten away with one there. Second and 10, 8.08 left to go in half number one. If you're just joining us, it has been, well, all cat country. Panthers 32 to nothing over the Mingus Marauders. Mingus now set, sets up in a wing formation, a little bit of a spread formation, and uh, there is the run up the middle, and it should be Arnado for a short gain of a maybe three. Now that was the Dirkalek on that one. They're getting real low in the line of scrimmage. Fighting for a, uh, just a couple yards down there. I'll tell you, Coconino's got some size on that defensive line. You got Pearson Watson, and a couple of these big guys over six foot for the Panthers. This is looking sharp on defense. Mingus takes their time in the huddle, approaching seven and a half minutes left to go. Machado comes to the near side, so does Brulin. Camacho goes over center, takes the snap, hands it off, and it is going to be rumbling and stumbling and pushing the pile forward. That is a, an effective run out there. And that's going to be, that, that's going to be Arnado. And Arnado picks it up enough for the first down. So Mingus moves the chains as the new line of scrimmage is at their own 27-yard line. Yeah, give a lot of credit there to Isaiah Latham. Big guy walking back to the huddle with Makai Arnuato. They were a tag team in that run. Latham was pushing them from behind them, picking, and they uh, made a group effort out of that. <laughs> Well, I like the fact that they allowed the scrum to happen. <laughs> yeah, me too, me too, because there we just benefited from that. Right, exactly. And you see it just about every Saturday and Sunday, nonetheless, do. Man in motion is going to be Dixon, and there is motion all over the flag, all, all over the place. We've yeah. got flags everywhere. Now we're going to see who who might have moved first. And I'm going to I'm going to assume it's the Marauders here. Lots of movement. No. And no, they're giving it up to the Panthers. All right, and that's going to go the Marauders' way and help out uh, the earlier penalty the Marauders had in the drive with a defensive encroachment on the Panthers. So Ming is able to draw him off. Get a first and short then. First and five. Wing formation now. Camacho over center, takes a snap and hands it off. Going the opposite direction is Arnado. Arnado, great. He had a tunnel. Did you see the tunnel that he was able to run through as he picks up ninth, or pardon me, 14? Uh, it's a, just a great run. You'll see the replay here. And that was going to be Brulin with the handoff. And Brulin shifty oh, way to get to the sidelines and uh, get the Marauders moving downfield. I don't want to bring up the previous drives right now, Jackie, because, again, the Marauders are finding success moving the ball downfield. 45-yard line, their own 45-yard line, just under six minutes left to go in the first half. Quarterback takes the snap, and uh, this one is going to be Arnado. And Arnado will fall forward for about two or three. And I got to call it out when I see it. Isaiah Latham with a pancake on that play. It's when you're blocking your man so hard and fast that you run him right into the ground and, and fall on top of him. See, I always thought you were, I always thought you were like, you know, missing breakfast is that what you were doing. <laughs> I might be. That yeah. might be my subconsciousness <laughs> wanting pancakes. But you know what? Right. Isaiah Latham delivered. There you go. Second and seven now for the Mingus Marauders, and uh, there's going to be the handoff. That one goes a little trickery up the middle, but uh, Coconino ready for it. And it's going to be a short game, maybe one. 
Yeah, it's just a, a tight spot, too. Marauders try a little bit of a counter, but you're in so tight on that lineup that it just took a couple Panthers to get through the line of scrimmage to make the play. An important third down, third and medium, maybe third and a long six out there for the Mingus Marauders. Arnado and uh, Dirkleck in the backfield. Camacho takes a snap, and it's going to be Dirkleck bounces to the outside, tried to read his block, and ends up bouncing to the outside, losing uh, yardage. Now, do you go for it here on fourth down, even though you're pretty close to the middle of the, uh, the field? Uh, I, here, I would punt it. I would get it downfield, give your defense a, a chance at redemption. You're obviously going to have to make some adjustments at halftime because uh, this Coconino offense has just been ruthless. Uh, but, yeah, I would punt this one deep, Jackie. Try to pin them back. Now, of course, Dirkalak is your punter. And has been your primary quarterback for most of the season. And we're going to get a timeout for Mingus. With that timeout, we're going to take a break. We will return to Coconino High School, fourth down for the Mingus Marauders when we come back after this. People often refer to Larry Green Chevrolet as the people place. Keeping that reputation is a priority in the community and with every customer that comes through the door. Larry Green Chevrolet, we're better and we'll prove it. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van or SUV, you'll find our selection extensive and the sales team professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet just off Highway 260 next to Walmart or LarryGreenChevrolet.com. Four thirteen left to go. Mingus down 32 to 0. Dirkalek back to punt. Camacho will be the short man. Both of them can throw the ball. See if there's any trickery available here. And nope, the kick will be off. Klaus will receive it at about the 14-yard line. Take it to the far side. Looking for somewhere to go. Mingus, oh, nice tackle out there by Latham. Latham just stood him up right at about the 22-yard line. Uh, he put on the brakes and tried to uh, juke and shake off Latham. He wouldn't have anything of it. Uh, did you see the pancake at the end of that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I had to call yeah, that, that one was after the whistle, so I'm not sure if that stack actually counts. <laughs> You're right. And I, Isaiah's got to be a little bit careful on that one, but nonetheless, great job by the big man. You don't typically see that. I'll tell you, on punts, Jackie, back in my day, I hated punts because I didn't want to run downfield, and there Isaiah Latham gives the big guys a great name on a punt. Two receivers to the near side. Every time they have done this, they have thrown the ball down the field. Two backs in the backfield. One to either side of Watson. 22-yard line for Coconino. He steps back, looks to throw, throws, and has a man. It's going to be number 23 who has a first down, and about 14 yards on the reception is going to be Pearson Watson. Yeah, Pearson Watson's got that over 6-2, 6-3 frame, so easy target for Watson right there. And Coconino obviously huddling up. They're in no rush to get a playoff with three minutes and 35 seconds left in the half. They have a huge 32-0 lead. Same formation. Arnado's going to have to pick up Pearson. You got Dixon to the outside man. There's the snap. Quarterback this time is going to run it and will get bottled up after about three or four. Saw Glassman in there. Saw Latham in there. Yeah, and that's a, just a, a nice group effort there by the Marauders. And I'll tell you, the passing game for the Panthers, uh, I mean, I know we're going to talk about it in the halftime show. It's been so impressive. Second and seven for the Coconino Panthers. Under three minutes left to go. Now the 38-yard line is the line of scrimmage. Looks like the 45 is going to be the line to gain. Tight formation now, showing run. Here comes Coconino. There's the snap, and it'll go to the second back, who winds his way through and will get tackled. 
And it's such a tight formation. Coconino executes it pretty well, but Marauders there able to just kind of get everybody close and bundled up there in the line of scrimmage, and Coconino just can't get anywhere. They're lined up so tight, though. I mean, there's, there's got to be less than a foot in between the linemen and the backs there. Chowed in on the tackle for the Mingus Marauders. Third and five. Mingus trying to get their first stop of tonight's competition. Cornerback takes the snap, and it's going to be a reverse, and Santa stayed home. Good job, young man, and makes the tackle, and that is going to be a fourth down, and that flag came from the white hat, and that had tremendous arc to it. Did you see that? It did. It, he threw that with some serious emphasis. Uh, <laughs> that had some, some big distance. He's not happy about something. You he, can see him out there talking to the other refs. He's really not happy about something. Now, this would have been the first stop for the Mingus Marauders, but instead, we're going to have a personal foul against the Mingus Marauders. And a 15-yard penalty, which gives the first down to Coconino. Wow, and that's going to hurt. That one's going to hurt. You see the ref trying to find the white hat, say, hey, here's your flag back. That ended up on my side of the field. And I wonder who that was on. I, I saw a little bit of extracurricular after uh, a couple, a Marauder and a Panther were getting up. I didn't see anything too brutal out there. 45-yard line for the of the Mingus Marauders. Well, less than 150 left to go. Coconino, of course, has all three timeouts, but handedly have a lead of a 32 to nothing so far tight formation. Quarterback takes a snap and he's looking to throw. Steps back. Has a man. Pass complete. First down and more. And Hyatt makes a swing tackle out there. Helicopter and spins him down. However, it's going to be a 16-yard gain. And that's going to go to tight end Reed Merrill for the Panthers. Nice catch there by Reed. And boy, I, I just can't even fathom the success that Coconino continues to find through the air. Well, it's going to be a timeout here for Coconino. We're going to take a quick break with him. 126 left to go in the half. We'll return after this. Choose the region's most comprehensive heart program. Choose care close to home. Choose world-class surgeons. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Choose precision. Choose innovation. Choose robotic-assisted knee and hip replacement. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Back here at Coconino, well, the Mingus Marauders had a stop and then didn't have a stop. And unfortunately, the personal foul has uh, continued this drive for Coconino out there. That is very unfortunate. There is the snap and a run play going up the middle for another first down. And that is going to bring the ball inside the 20 and toward the 10 yard line. Give him about 17 on the run. Yeah, and that's going to be Mickelson for the Panthers. And I'll tell you, he's, he's had a great game so far, rushing the ball. And in the absence of Cooper French, who uh, I know we'll talk about Cooper another few times before this game is over. Coconino, star running back that went out in the very second play, I think it was. There's a snap, run play up the middle, and a good stop by the Mingus Marauders. That's going to be Klaus, uh, Eric Glassman, rather. And... Uh, and Glassman finds himself a good defensive game. Well, 53 seconds left to go. Coconino calls their second timeout. They have one more. Obviously, they have the ability to throw the ball. The line of scrimmage is at the 10 or 11 yard line out there. So Mingus trying to keep more points off the board here at the end of the second quarter. 53 seconds left, and we will have the extended halftime, of course, with this being homecoming here at Coconino High School. And I'll tell you, Coconino really wants to punch us in and get uh, 
some more points on the board. You'd imagine if they scored, they'd be going for two again. Uh, the Marauders desperate for a stop here. You can, you can see the coach, Coach Montabai is in that huddle thinking, how are we gonna stop the Panthers on this? This is crucial before you go into halftime. Well, at halftime, the Longfellow excavating halftime report will uh, do our keys to the second half. We'll go through all of the stats. Unfortunately, most of them have gone the way of the, the guys in black out here. Coconino in the black uniforms and the very hard to read red numbers on those uniforms, by the way. Mingus in the away right, and there is the hand. Oh, quarterback's going to throw. Has a man in zone. It's going to be Klaus for the touchdown. <laughs> Well, and I can't stress enough how well of a throw that was and a catch. I mean, Coconino's passing game is seriously underrated. I mean, well, that, they haven't great, used it. Yeah, yeah, you're right. They haven't had to. They've had a great rushing attack, and boy, the air game for the Panthers has found such good success. Well, Klaus will get his uh, second catch of the game but his third touchdown of the game, how about that? And now they're gonna line up to go for two with 48 seconds left to go here in the first half and there is the snap and the handoff goes into the end zone for the two point conversion out there. They've been perfect on the two point conversions. That is number two, that's gonna be Bridger French. We'll take a break, we'll return for kickoff. 40 to nothing after this. Two things we can count on every year. A new set of tax rules and great weather here in Northern Arizona. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, locally owned and operated by Lewis Rice since 1997, is here for you all year long. Your neighborhood Jackson Hewitt Tax Office will help you in all of your taxing situations. Electronic filing is always free with your tax preparation at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Get more in return. Call 1-800-234-1040 for an office near you. There is the kickoff, and it is deep, fumbled right at the goal line, and then brought out. And nope, they're going to call it down. And it, he was in, outside of the end zone when he when he first caught it. And this is Brulin for the Mingus Marauders, and then ended up going into the end zone, and then I'm not sure where they're going to mark this Oh, they ball. look like they're going to mark him at about the one. Yeah. I, I am not sure. That was funky. I... Uh, that's where he first touched the ball. Wow, so on a touch. Yeah. We saw this on the opening kickoff, too. I haven't quite seen that myself, but... So on a touch, he touches the ball when it hits the ground to pick it up. And now the Marauders find themselves with, well, essentially the longest field you can have. Okay, so in the event, in the event that Coconino somehow gets a safety out of this... Um, that would make it 42 to nothing and a continuous clock in the first half. Camacho takes a snap and a, the run out of the end zone, pushed back in the end zone. No, he got out of the end zone. Just because you pushed him back there doesn't mean that it's a safety. <laughs> yeah, you can see Coconino fired up, thinking they got it there, but Marauders with just enough, just enough momentum to keep it out. It's like, Arnado, just go forward, dude. Well, we're going to give him one on it, maybe a half of one, but we're going to give him one. And I'm not sure Mingus is even going to attempt another snap out here. Nine seconds left to go in the half. Seven, six. The Longfellow halftime report is coming up in one. And now we're going to take a break. It has been all Coconino here at... Homecoming for the Panthers, 40 to nothing. We will return for our halftime report after this. Choose the region's most comprehensive heart program. Choose care close to home. Choose world-class surgeons. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Choose precision. Choose innovation. 
Choose robotic assisted knee and hip replacement. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. For 30 years, Roxu screen printers have provided Northern Arizona with clean, crisp, quality screen printing. They work with you to make the right choices in creating the right artwork and message to put forth your best image. Choose from brand name products and even fashion forward designs, including caps, tees, sweatshirts, polos, and jackets. Make Roxu your choice for work and sports uniforms, workwear, resort wear, and more. Find out more at ROKZUTs.com. Roxu screen printers in Cottonwood, where clothing comes to rock. People often refer to Larry Green Chevrolet as the people place. Keeping that reputation is a priority in the community and with every customer that comes through the door. Larry Green Chevrolet, we're better and we'll prove it. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, you'll find our selection extensive and the sales team professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet just off Highway 260 next to Walmart or LarryGreenChevrolet.com. Call Rick or Scott Stokes at Sun Country Custom Woodworks about cabinets for every purpose and every budget. Sun Country Custom Woodworks can custom build cabinets for your dream kitchen or bath, adding tremendous value to your home. Organize the garage and store stuff right with a call to Sun Country. And ask about money-saving options, including modular cabinet choices. You know, your cabinets may not be from this century. For ideas, start at suncountrywoodworks.com. Back here at Coconino High School, yeah, I gave in somewhere around the first quarter and put on the jacket, and Nick is, is holding strong, being yep. tough out there. Yeah, I'm enjoying the cooler weather uh, normally in Phoenix, so I'm going to just soak it in. Well, see, that would make it seem colder to you, in my opinion. You're right, but originally from New York, maybe my blood's just a little bit thicker, maybe? Well, I know something. Yes, okay. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you, the thick part of uh, the halftime report is, is the score for Coconino, 40 to nothing here just in the first two quarters. Uh, and they're going to get the ball uh, first in, uh, no, actually, Mingus will get the ball in the second half, right? Yep, yeah, yep. And, and that's uh, the Panthers have just really showcased. How about their passing game? I mean, I know we're going to get into some individual stats, but we did not think that we were going to come out and see Coconino play the air game like they have. No, certainly not. Well, it has been all Coconino. It has been uh, the Panthers all the way. First quarter, first drive, 9.02, a two-yard uh, quarterback drive by Watson, and the uh, two-point conversion by Mickelson was good. It was 8 to nothing. And then following a fumble by the Mingus Marauders and then a long pass play down, downfield, a one yard sweep by Klaus and Klaus also got the two point conversion it was 16 to nothing then with uh, no time left in the first quarter uh, 22 yard counter by Patton and the two point conversion by Mickelson was good it was 24 to nothing 840 left to go quarter number two and here they go again a 22 yard pass Watson finds French that would be Brigger French Bridger French and uh, the two point conversion by Klaus was good. It was 22 to nothing. And then with 48 seconds left, a 12-yard pass from Watson to Klaus. And French got the two-point conversion. And here we are, 40 to nothing here at halftime. And it has been it has been all Coco all the way here. Yeah, the Marauders are going to have some uh, second-half adjustments absolutely necessary for this one. Uh, so far in Grand Canyon region play, the Marauders have not scored a point. Um, that's really, really tough. To, you know, and it goes to show how good the Grand Canyon region is. It's come a long way where Mingus used to be a powerhouse a while ago. It almost like the teams took turns. Coco was a powerhouse. Before Mingus and Coco, it was Flagstaff that was a powerhouse. Now Bradshaw's coming on scene. They're a really, really good team. Uh, they're up 14-7 to against Prescott right now. A scoring update for you. And, yeah, uh, the Marauders have got to find a way to get some points on the board here starting region play. Well, we're going to take a break here in the Longfellow Excavating Halftime Report. No job too big or too small. Longfellow Excavating does it all from septic installation and drainage, grading, and even, well, so much more. You want to call Josh Longfellow, former Mingus Marauders, for a, for a free quote, 928-300-3792. We'll return to Coconino High School coming up after this.
All Price Insurance on Main Street in Cottonwood is your local insurance provider for personal and commercial insurance. Call and compare 23 insurance companies for home, health, auto, RV, motorcycle, boat, or ATV. Specialty insurance and insurance bonds are no problem at All Price Insurance. Call or visit All Price Insurance today. Two things we can count on every year. A new set of tax rules and great weather here in northern Arizona. Jackson Hewitt Tax Service, locally owned and operated by Lewis Rice since 1997, is here for you all year long. Your neighborhood Jackson Hewitt Tax Office will help you in all of your taxing situations. Electronic filing is always free with your tax preparation at Jackson Hewitt Tax Service. Get more in return. Call 1-800-234-1040 for an office near you. The right vehicles, the right people, the right price. Make Jones Ford of Verde Valley the right place to buy. Choose from our new in-stock Ford selection or custom order just the way you want it. Buy pre-owned with peace of mind with Jones Ford's lifetime powertrain warranty at no extra cost. Plus, drive a little, save a lot. Jones Ford is your tax advantage destination. So for the right vehicles at the right price, make the right choice. Jones Ford Verde Valley, family owned and operated for over half a century. Just off I-17 in Camp Verde. Yavapai College has many degree and certificate programs to get you on track to a rewarding, well-paying career in a variety of industries such as healthcare, manufacturing, construction, elementary education, and art. Fall semester starts on August 15th, so there's still time to register. Visit us online today at yc.edu slash admission to connect with your future career. And welcome back here to the Longfellow Excavating Halftime Report at Coquino High School. The Panthers leading the Marauders 40 to nothing, and it has been a lopsided game. The Mingus Marauders have 57 total yards on 17 carries so far in the first half. Durkalik has uh, seven carries for 23 yards. Arenado has uh, seven carries for 18 yards, and Brulin has two for 16 in the air. Camacho has been the quarterback back for the entire first uh, half and he has uh, ended up 2 for 7 with one interception 23 yards 2 for 7 one interception so Mingus was trying to put the ball up but it has really been the home team the homecoming team Coconino that has uh, thrown the ball well so Enoch Watson out here is 9 for 9 217 wow. yards wow. and two touchdowns Incredible. That is incredible. I'm, I'm not sure Mingus has given up that much uh, passing yardage this year. No, and, and that's for Coconino to put that on one game, and, and let alone one half. That was only the first half, too. So, boy, Watson is having himself a highlight real game. Oh, he certainly is, yeah. No, no doubts about it. Quinn Mickelson has got seven carries for 40 yards out there. Klaus has got one for a touchdown. Uh, Riker Pattern has three carries for 24 yards. Watson has uh, got uh, three carries, negative three yards. That was uh, due to a Glassman, uh, a Glassman sack out there. However, it, the story has been really in the air. 217 yards in the air, another 70 yards on the ground. So 287 yards of offense for Coconino here just in half number one and 40 points on the board. Yeah, and the Marauders, a couple turnovers really plagued some good drives that the Marauders had. The Marauders were driving in the first few drives and uh, ended up with a couple turnovers. And then towards the end of the half, we saw uh, Coconino win the, the field position battle. Uh, they did not have far to go. That's why the 280 yards, they, they have 40 points because they're, they're having a short field, long field. They're getting it done, and really, no matter how we give it to them tonight. Coconino has not punted. They have not not been stopped uh, so far this game in any way, shape, or form. Um, actually, Mingus had him stopped, and then a unsportsmanlike penalty gave them the first down and, and kept the, the final drive of the first half alive and uh, put the final uh, points up on the board out there for um, 
for the homecoming Coconino Panthers squad out there. I want to thank uh, Longfellow Excavating, of course, licensed, bonded, and insured, family owned and operated with decades of experience. You want to give a former Marauder a call, that's Josh Longfellow. Free quotes available at 928 300 3792. That's 928 300 3792. Well, we're going to take a break here in the Longfellow Halftime Report. When we come back, we will go out on the uh, Coconino Band here on the screen. But when we come back, we're going to be talking about second half changes. What does Mingus have to do? What does Coconino have to do? And we'll give you uh, our last scene update, not official, but last scene update about Cooper French for Coconino when we return after this. I'm Chris. And I'm Tandy, owners of Taylor Waste. We're homegrown in the Verde Valley and nearly your last local choice. We want to be your first choice for residential and small business garbage service. Get a free month service when you make the switch to Taylor Waste. And enjoy monthly service as low as $16 per month. Visit TaylorWaste.com for more information. Or to start service, call Taylor Waste at 649-2662. Taylor Waste, service tailored to your needs. For 30 years, Rock Zoo Screen Printers have provided Northern Arizona with clean, crisp, quality screen printing. They work with you to make the right choices in creating the right artwork and message to put forth your best image. Choose from brand name products and even fashion forward designs, including caps, tees, sweatshirts, polos, and jackets. Make Rock Zoo your choice for work in sports uniforms, workwear, resort wear, and more. Find out more at ROKZOOTEES.com. Rock Zoo Screen Printers in Cottonwood, where clothing comes to rock. Starting in the late 1920s, Grandpa Gettle and his brothers laid the groundwork for what would become a family legacy. Almost 100 years and 100 patents later, Gettle's High Desert Mechanical continues to raise the bar of quality heating, cooling, and plumbing products and services in the Verde Valley. Call Gettle's High Desert Mechanical Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing at 567-2200 or online at gettleshdm.com. Providing solutions for your comfort. Don't settle. Get Gettle's and go Marauder. All Price Insurance on Main Street in Cottonwood is your local insurance provider for personal and commercial insurance. Call and compare 23 insurance companies for home, health, auto, RV, motorcycle, boat, or ATV. Specialty insurance and insurance bonds are no problem at All Price Insurance. Call or visit All Price Insurance today. And back here at Coconino High School. <laughs> Panther Band still on the field here for homecoming 2022. Jackie Bessler and Nick Yatsenko along with me. 40 to nothing, Coconino is uh, in the lead. However, uh, this lead may have cost them something quite precious. Yeah, Cooper French. Uh, yeah. I mean, the Coconino Panthers workhorse all season. Uh, he started as a junior, really good running back last season for the Panthers and hate to see him limp off the field like we did. He, he hobbled off, uh, not even using his left leg, so his left ankle leg. So uh, the, the recent update on him is we did see him as the team was going into halftime, still in his gear. So I, I think he's probably feeling okay enough to obviously want to go back out there. He doesn't want to change out. Um, but with a 40 to nothing lead, I can almost assure you we will not see Cooper French for the rest of this game. Oh, I, I would be, um, I, I would actually be upset if right. I saw Cooper French trying to come out here for the second half. Nonetheless, um, he did get a ride on one of the ATVs here, um, uh, all-terrain vehicles, uh, uh, back to the locker room area. So he did not walk off the field right. with the rest of his uh, team out there. So, you know, hopefully that young man can get get back for uh, you know the next game or so here I know that he's going to be a, a major weapon that yeah. you know Coconino wants yeah. to be able to have out I mean, on the six field. Six games played and over 800 yards rushing that's overall average of 100 yards a game over that so Cooper French uh, our thoughts out to you hopefully uh, heal up quick and 
He's back at region play, because I'll tell you, this Grand Canyon region is no joke, and Coconino's going to need him. We already saw a really tough Bradshaw uh, Mountain team, and uh, that's a close game with Prescott tonight. And, yeah. Uh, trying to get an update on that Flagstaff game, but right now, Marauders trying to dig themselves out of a hole against the Panthers. So Bradshaw made it 7 nothing with the first score of the game coming at just under four minutes left to go in the second quarter, and then two minutes left to go in the second quarter. Prescott ties it up. So uh, you've got, you know, two minutes and 14 points scored, right? And then Bradshaw scores again, making it 14 to seven with 57 seconds left to go in the quarter. So it, it three minutes and change, and, and there's 21 points on the on the board out there. That's all your excitement coming in just a few minutes. Uh, who knows if they were driving on each other or yeah, one of them just couldn't find the end zone, but now it's starting to go right at about halftime for them. Well, Mr. Berger comes to join us over here on this side of the field. How about that? In fact, I was talking to Coach Young last week, and I asked him, I said, so what has happened since you have been at Bradshaw? What, what has happened with the big brother concept? I mean, does Bradshaw still look at, you know, Prescott as the big brother? And he went, oh, we won't have any of that. And so that was the first thing that he decided he was going to do away with. But it was a curse for so long. Bradshaw would have a phenomenal year going, and Prescott would be so-so, and then Prescott would beat him. Yeah, and that's what they're battling for, that trophy between those two teams. It's a good rivalry. It is. Oh, Prescott and Bradshaw having, yeah, you know Coach Bob Young is going to bring his A game against the rivals being Prescott. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be a dog fight tonight. And by well, the sounds of it, it already is with the score. Certainly so. Well, speaking of scores, 40 to nothing on this one. So, Nick, I got to tell you, I got to ask you, I'm going to put you on the spot here. How does Mingus come back and outscore Coconino 42 to nothing here in the second half? Well, it's going to take some trick plays. Yeah. <laughs> it, okay. Um, it might take. Uh, Coconino letting us have uh, a few penalties go our way, maybe even a few turnovers. Obviously, 40 to nothing is a huge spread, uh, especially when Coconino has just proven that they can just drive downfield. So the Marauders want any chance to climb back in this thing. They're going to have to force turnovers, no penalties. Like we said, uh, the one drive that the Marauders were stopping the Panthers on, a penalty gave the Panthers the first down, and they kept going downfield. So right. uh, there's so many things that you could look back on and say, well, if that didn't happen, it'd be much better. Um, same with the first couple drives for the Marauders. If they don't turn that ball over, this may be an entirely different game. We might have two touchdowns because those two drives, we had already had first downs on those drives, and then the turnovers happened. So, boy, it, it's a tough hill to climb, um, but we'll see what kind of adjustments the Marauders made. So obviously, if you're if you're Coconino, um, you want to get to continuous clock and then take, you know, you, you want to run as as many backups as you can right. at that particular point. Uh, Mingus, if you're Mingus, you have absolutely nothing to lose at right. this time, which yep. which, which makes you a dangerous team. Okay, which means that everything that you wanted to work on in practice over the last couple of weeks that you haven't been able to work on, work on it here. What's the difference? Yep. You know, put it in a real game situation. If if there are plays that you haven't really perfected yet, practice them now. If you want to, if you want to, you know, work on long bombs, work on them now. I mean, this is where you you, you bring everything to fruition because you know you've got Flagstaff coming up next week for your own homecoming. Then you've got Lee Williams on the road and those are two games that you really need here in the Grand Canyon region to, to be competitive. 100% and look at Lee Williams. Lee Williams was a team that beat this Coconino Panthers team. They held Coconino to seven points. Uh, so far tonight the Marauders already given up 40 at the half so yeah I couldn't agree more with you Jackie. I, I think the Marauders if you have it deep in your playbook, it's time to pull it out because, yeah, if you can't win this one, odds are you're not going to win region, and then your playoff chances get pretty much drained at that point. Well, they start to diminish, no doubt about it, but we got another half of football left. We're going to take a short break. Uh, we're going to take a 30-second break here, and when we return here to Coconino High School, 40 to nothing, second half. Coming up, Minis will get the ball first when we return after this.
Call Rick or Scott Stokes at Sun Country Custom Woodworks about cabinets for every purpose and every budget. Sun Country Custom Woodworks can custom build cabinets for your dream kitchen or bath, adding tremendous value to your home. Organize the garage and store stuff right with a call to Sun Country. And ask about money-saving options, including modular cabinet choices. You know, your cabinets may not be from this century. For ideas, start at suncountrywoodworks.com. Coconino High School, Jackie Bessler and Nick Yatsenko along with us. We forgot to push the little button that says talk. All right, well, we're coming down to the end of the Longfellow Halftime Report. Remember, no job too big, too small, licensed, bonded, and insured. Family owned and operated with decades of experience. I'm talking about Longfellow Excavating. Call Josh Longfellow at 928-337-92. They did not share with us the royalty out here. So we have uh, we have been def- we have uh, been uh, denied the royalty, and so uh, we don't know. But uh, we we gather that there is a king, a queen, a court, and people won. Yeah, my heart hurts a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think we were in the running for something. Where were maybe we? Not. I don't know. Maybe not. I'm, I'm pretty sure I wasn't. I don't think their records go back far <laughs> enough for me to <laughs> be in the running for something. <laughs> what do I know? All right, so once again, uh, the Bradshaw Prescott game is uh, 14 to 7. Bradshaw with the lead here going into the third quarter. They're a little bit behind our game. And uh, we will see how the Mingus Marauders come out and respond. Now, Mingus will get the ball first here in the second half. And obviously, special teams could put the Mingus Marauders in a, a, a good position here pretty quickly then, yes? Yeah, and special teams, uh, like last week we saw great punts. This week they've been okay. Um, we haven't seen too many special teams because we've had some turnovers. So that's got to clean that up. I, I'd like to have some good special teams plays out there, especially if there's one one way type uh, you can win the game you got three teams offense defense and special teams and the Marauders would like to win at least one of those well Minkus has got to find a way to get points on the board because you made mention at the beginning of the halftime report that Mingus has now been shut out for six quarters here in the Grand Canyon region which is is not what the Mingus Marauders uh, expected or wanted to have happen here. No, and, and it's not typical. Uh, these teams in the Grand Canyon region this season are are contenders, absolute contenders. We got a lot of them are clawing at the bottom 16 to get into playoffs. So these teams are serious. And Coconino, they're the same as Bradshaw. Bradshaw is a really fine-tuned looking team. They played great last week, and uh, Coconino's coming out and proving themselves tonight too. I'm trying to find some of the um, the rankings here as we get here into the second half. The uh, Mingus Marauders fell to number 25 in the rankings. There we go. Yeah, and that's going to be after a loss to Bradshaw Mountain last week, and that was boy just a, a tough loss for the Marauders to have because that's your region play, and Bradshaw's got their heads up trying to win the Grand Canyon region title this season. So in 1A, Williams ended up dropping to number four, by the way. But playoffs actually start the 28th. They will host Duncan, if I uh, see the bracket correctly. Duncan, five and three. Cam Verde actually lost a, a, a spot and then moved down to number four, even though they won. They will host Heritage Academy Levine, who is number 10 here tonight, six and two. This will be the probably the toughest game that we have seen so far here from um, uh, Camp Verde here in the, uh, in, the in, in the 2022 season. And uh, Arizona College Prep still on top here in the, the 4A division. The Mingus Marauders dropped to number 25, and uh, Bradshaw had uh, bumped back up, I think, to number 17, 16 or 17. Oh, there we go. Prescott, with their win last week, ended up bumping up uh, three spots to number eight, and uh, we are underway. Dirk Leck takes it. 
tries to find a hole, finds his way through and gets across the 30 back to the traditional 31 yard line where Mingus has started almost every drive. Yeah, so Prescott for the Marauders to really put it in gear here. Did you see Dirklick on that return? He, he almost looked like he was getting ready to get hit and then saw an opening and went another 10 yards. I love it. So Prescott at number eight in the 4A rankings. Wow. Bradshaw moved up seven spots with their win over Mingus to number 16. Lee Williams with their win moved up six spots to number 24. Coconino dropped five spots to 22 and you can tell they're pissed off about it. Mingus moves and that'll be a five yard penalty. Mingus fell seven spots from 18 to number 25 and Flagstaff with their loss uh, to Prescott fell two spots to number 31. I'll tell you, it's great to hear uh, Williams and Camp Verde uh, having some success, Northern Arizona football and that our area up there, and well, speaking of success, it's time for the Marauders to find some offensive success to put some points on the board. First and 15 from their own 26-yard line. There's the handoff. Bruland sweeps around the outside and will get caught up, maybe gets one or so, spins forward for a yard. Well, that's going to be just some tough yardage there by Bruland. And Nick, Nick Choate comes up with a little limp. Hopefully he's okay. Uh, yeah, Bruin being shifty in there and unable to get to the line of scrimmage. Machado out, Dixon in. Dixon wearing number 45 here tonight. Uh, our condolences go out to Leckington, who we have lost for the season to a knee injury. And there is the gigantic gray pole that Coconino High School is famous for. Dirk Leck is in motion, comes to the near side. A penalty flag goes up. The pass is caught out there by Jones over the top of the receiver. And uh, we are going to see an illegal shift against the Mingus Marauders. So that actually could work out in their, be in their favor if they do the five yard penalty but give them their down back. Illegal shift against the Marauders. Nope, they give them an opportunity to decline it. And so it's gonna be third down. So a completed pass out to Jones, but for no yardage. And leaves the Marauders with a third and long, and that's just gonna be really tough. The Marauders have gotta find a way to get the ball downfield, whether it's a any sort of a halfback pass, some kind of trickery maybe. Second catch out here tonight for Jones. Third and 14 from the 27 yard line, man in motion, and quarterback's gonna throw. Has a man, throws, and it is caught, but it's going to be short of a first down. Dirk Leck on the reception, eight yards on the reception. Tackle made out there by number 15, Patton, Pattern, rather. I'd love to see it. Camacho to Dirk I didn't think we'd be calling that too much, but here we are as we see Camacho playing quarterback for the Marauders, and the switch up where Dirk Leck's playing a little tailback, halfback, and their wide receiver. So Mingus sets up for punt formation. It's fourth and a long four. And Dirkelec is back for the punt. There is the snap, low snap. He gets it off, hard punt, and two men back, and it's gonna be picked up at about the 25 yard line. Weaving his way out to the outside and still on his feet. Finally brought down at about the 45 yard line. A good return out there of about 20 yards. And it's gonna be first and 10 at the Coconino 46. Yeah, and we'll see how Coconino comes out. I would imagine that we're gonna see Coconino take their time, huddle up. Uh, I mean, no rush here. They obviously just wanna kill this clock with a 40 to nothing lead. Nine minutes and 40 seconds left in the third. And that is exactly what they're doing, Jackie. They're back there and they're content in the huddle. Just talking about how they're gonna execute the next play coming up. But time, time's not coming off the clock, so they don't care at that point. Quarterback takes the snap and uh, will hand it off. First man through, finds his way through, still stuttering and on his legs. How about that? Stumbles forward for a first down and 13. Let's see, that is gonna be Riker Patton again, and he's had a couple nice plays for the Panthers tonight. 
And that run was really, really good. You can see the replay there. Patton follows his blockers, breaks through Ethan Jones' tackle. And I'll tell you, just from uh, calling these last games for the Marauders, that's a tough thing to do. Ethan Jones, a great athlete, makes great plays. And Riker on that one, nice run. 40-yard line of the Mingus Marauders, the line of scrimmage. Watson takes the snap, shows the handoff, doesn't hand it off, throws it, has a man up, and it is not caught. This is the first incomplete pass as Arnauto went up in the air. He wasn't going to get there. He just tried to screen his body, and Klaus unable to come down with it. Yeah, a great defensive play there by Makai Arnauto. Don't let uh, the wide receiver have a chance at it. Makai could tell uh, when his wide receiver was kind of moving his hands right to get ready to catch the ball that he was coming, and he just puts his hands up and makes a great defensive play. Watson is human. Ladies and gentlemen, there's the, the news is out. Watson is human. He is not starting for Brady next week. There's the snap, and it is going to be a wildcat. How about that? Still on his feet, and the quarterback pretended to have it, and number 11 with the run uh, flagged down at about the 42-yard line, 38-yard line, which would be about two yards past the line to scrimmage. So we'll see. That looks like it might go back against Coconino. Yeah, and Coconino's backing up. I, I think you're right. That's going to be holding. And that flag came in a little bit late, but obviously the ref saw a little bit of holding, and that's going to benefit the Marauders big time. Second and 18 now. Works out to be an eight-yard penalty against Coconino, who has four penalties for 38 yards now. And the spot on the field is right in that spot where that gray pole Nice no notorious. Play. That's notorious. I know. It, it has always been traditional out here. And the pole is going to play a factor. So I'm not sure which side I'm supposed to be on with the pole. Watson has a man in motion and fakes the pitch. He's going to throw, looking to throw. He gets pressure, throws it short, has a man at the 45, first down, and Mingus is able to contain him, but he just got out of the backfield and was able to just get lost out there. Yeah, that's broken coverage. Uh, just broken coverage, maybe going a little bit too long, and the Marauders just forget about the wide receiver there for the Panthers, and Coconino moving the ball downfield, and Jackie, uh, just to go back to the poll, I'll tell you, Coconino always brings a heck of a home crowd. I mean, really, it's fantastic. They always pack the stands, and they're loud. It's a great scene. 20-yard reception and a first down. There's the snap. First back through. Has a running lane. Bounces to the outside. Finally picked up. But not until we get a first down out there. That'll be Mickelson on the carry. He's had himself a night. And that's another one. That's a, that's a big run right there. 11 yards. Moves the chains inside the red zone at the 18-yard line. And keeps the clock going, which is what's most important for the Panthers at this point. Next score of any type here for the Coconino Panthers is going to put us in continuous clock. Tight formation once again. There's the snap, and the quarterback's going to keep it this time. Bounces to the outside, jumps over Amigas Marauder, and then gets nailed, and here comes the flag. And let's see what that, what an impressive play there by Watson. Enoch's going to go up and over. You got the replay here. Check that out. What a hop. Nice job by Watson. You see the flag coming late, and we still haven't seen any signal, but boy, how about that athletic play? If he would have not had an incompletion, Jackie, Jack, I really love the Brady comment because, man, this kid is having himself a heck of a night. You know, if I was if I was a coach, I would be asking Mr. Watson to not hurdle. That's yeah. how you get hurt. Yeah, you're right about that. As a football fan, though, I love to see it. Love to see it. But you're right. If that was uh, any kind of quarterback, Watson's got to be careful with that. Oh, and it's going to be a, a penalty. It looks like on the Coconino sidelines. Yeah. On the Coconino sidelines? Yeah, that's, uh, it Ooh. was either a sidelines warning plus the penalty, or the penalty was for the Coconino sidelines. Well, it's a 15-yard penalty nonetheless. And they're moving the sticks back because that last play was a first down and they moved them, so they're going to come back. 
So how about that? So the new line of scrimmage is the 26 yard line, but a first down. Third back gets it right up the middle and bounces to the outside. It's a foot race to the corner and Camacho will get him, but not until he gets inside the five yard line. And we got a Coconino Panther down on the ground hurting out there. All right, so that's going to be Riker Patton on the run again. And I'll tell you what, Riker has had some great success. Same as Mickelson. These guys have stepped in for uh, the um, missing Cooper French, who hopefully he's okay. We haven't seen Cooper back in the game since that first possession the Panthers had. And uh, another Panther is shaking up on that play. It's going to be number 70, Trey Wood. Hopefully he's okay. Big senior, 6'2", 204 pounds. First and goal from the five yard line. Coconino already leading 40 to nothing, trying to get into continuous clock here with just under seven minutes left to go in quarter number three. Tight formation once again. Quarterback set under center, takes a snap and is looking to throw, will throw, puts it up and it is broken up out there. How about that? Dixon breaks it up for the Mingus Marauders. Yeah, intended for Reed Merrill. Yeah, the Coconino Panthers, uh, size, sizable tight end, and Marauders do just a great job there. Pass, pass defense. See the replay here. Watson's going to drop back, and boy, just good touch on the ball, but nonetheless, nice job there by uh, Dixon out there on the coverage. Second and goal from the five. Coconino lines up. Same type formation. Quarterback takes a snap and will hand it off to the first back. And he will get trapped behind the line of scrimmage. And it's going to be Dixon again with the tackle. On the run is going to be Mickelson. Yeah, and that's a great play by Dixon. Dixon's having a couple great plays in a row there defensively. For those of you watching on uh, VVTV, you can see the run by Mickelson out to the back. And Dixon does just such a nice job of taking a good angle and using that speed to get him. But well, we have a holding call at the five yard line. And so that is going to go against. It'll take away the tackle for loss, but it'll bring the ball back outward of the 15 yard line, just sitting outside the 15 yard line. But it'll be second in goal now from the 15 yard line and they will get the clock rolling once again under 6.30 left to go in third quarter. And I'll tell you, the back and forth between penalties and moving the ball back has only hurt the Marauders because the clock is just continuing to tick. Tight formation once again. Quarterback will take the snap, looks to throw, puts the ball up, has a man over the top of his hands and Machado on coverage. Good timing with the contact out there. And the intended receiver was going to be Bridger French. Incomplete third and 10. Mingus now possibility of its first stop with six sec uh, six minutes left to go in the third quarter. Yeah, it'd be huge. It'd be absolutely huge for the Marauders. Give the Marauders a little bit of momentum, which is what they need to get their offense back out there with some momentum so they can put some points on the board. So right now, Coconino's threat again. Tight formation shotgun though. Watson is thrown out of this quite a bit here today. In fact, the 13th attempt and they're going to hand it off and going to sweep the opposite side. Mingus will stop it inside of the five, but running the ball was going to be number three, Jacob Klaus. And he will pick up 11, but it's going to be fourth and goal from the four. And see, in a situation like this, if I'm Coconino, I'm going to be trying a field goal here. We haven't seen him kick tonight. We haven't seen him kick an extra point. Um, and boy, you, you never know when you might need that special teams play in playoffs or region play. Uh, but nonetheless, Coconino's going to line up to go for it. We haven't stopped him on a two-point conversion. This is only one yard further. Fourth and goal from the four. Quarterback, it's a direct snap and it's going to be into the end zone. The direct snap goes to Mickelson and he gets the touchdown. Wow, a great sell there by Enoch Watson, the quarterback for the Panthers. He sells a bad snap and he, he got me on it. He sells a bad snap and that wasn't the case at all. Mickelson got the snap and ran right in. 
Well, if that's going to be the case, I've got a couple of timeshares I'd like to talk to you about. <laughs> <laughs> 46 to nothing, 513 left to go in the third quarter, and they're going to line up to go for two once again. Mickelson gets in for the from the four-yard line, and now they're just going to sit on it. As they take a knee, they don't even attempt the two-point conversion. 5.13 left to go. 46 nothing. We'll return to Coconino High School after this. I'm Chris. And I'm Tandy, owners of Taylor Waste. We are homegrown in the Verde Valley and nearly your last local choice. We want to be your first choice for residential and small business garbage service. Get a free month service when you make the switch to Taylor Waste. And enjoy monthly service as low as $16 per month. Visit TaylorWaste.com for more information. Or to start service, call Taylor Waste at 649-2662. Taylor Waste, service tailored to your needs. Back here at Coconino High School, we are into continuous clock. The Mingus Marauders have not been in continuous clock, well, at least on this side of the continuous clock all season long. Two men back for the Mingus Marauders. Line drive, Brulin will take it at about the four yard line. He's coming up hard right up the middle, trying to find a seam. He finds a little bit of one and gets taken down hard at about the 25 yard line. Yeah, that's a huge hit. Hopefully Brulin's gonna be okay and he you know, just pops up after that one. Big hit there by the Panthers and Marauders. Really, really gut check time for this offense. Time to put some points on the boards and Marauders have uh, gone an entire game and an entire half so far in Grand Canyon region play without scoring a point. So real crucial for the Marauders offense to start it. Mingus will take over here at the 25-yard line. Wing formation, one receiver to the near side. Man in motion, and there's the snap. Running up the middle is going to be, I think that's Brulin. Brulin, hard run, straight up the middle, finds the gap, gets six. Yeah, Brulin's going to run out. Looks like maybe his helmet strap broke or something on that one, so he'll go out. Looks like Dixon will come back in. 31 yard line, second and four, 4.30 left to go. And if Mingus continues to run the ball, then it doesn't matter that we have a running clock, right? Right, that's just, <laughs> that's just gonna kill the game out essentially. Wing formation, receiver on the far side now for the Mingus Marauders. There's the snap and the handoff. Dirkelec tries to get around the corner, can't do so. Good tackle out there by JT Begay. Yeah, what a great defensive play. Dirkelec's uh, tough to bring down, and JT does a nice job out in the open space there. You see the replay. Dirkelec tries to bounce that to the outside, and just unable to get there. Third and six. Brulin goes over to the sideline. I wonder if he's getting the play or if they're going to send somebody else in. And Marauder is not in any hurry here. Dixon comes in with the play. Says Camacho, throw the ball. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go downfield. Wing formation. Two backs behind Camacho, who's over center. Machado goes in motion. Camacho looks to throw, has a man. It goes to, yeah, it goes to uh, Camacho out there. Number seven with the reception and the first down. Give him 10 on the reception. And Mingus moves the chains. I told you it was going to be a pass. Yeah, how about that? I, I, Camacho is a, a real good looking quarterback in that pocket. He knows how to drop. He's got a little bit of size to him. And able to find Machado there. And that's what I'm talking about for the Marauders offense. So even if you're going to find the success through the air, and that's the way to go. Well, it's time to practice whatever it is that you want to practice. Wing formation once again and a hard run up the middle. Dirkelak gets taken down and right about the line of scrimmage, maybe give him one. And it, we're approaching two minutes left in the third quarter. Coconino demanding 46 to nothing lead over the Marauders. And you see the Marauders just huddled up right now. They're just worried about executing and I support that. I think you got to get in there and make sure you're all on the same page. 
That way you can get down the field and get some points. And it's like maybe somebody's injured out there, Jackie. I can't quite tell, but we have some trainers running across the field, it looks like. Yeah, and they, they did stop the clock for it. And if that be the case, then it would be on the Mingus Marauder side, but I don't see anybody down over there for Mingus. Now they're going to wind the clock and get it rolling again. See who they're going to go take a look at. I wonder if it's... I don't see now. I can't make any suggestions. Dixon, near side is a receiver. Man in motion is going to be Machado. Machado is going to get the pitch. Machado hits the corner, gets across the 50, and, ooh, and gets hit hard out of bounds. In the face mask, gets hit hard out of bounds. Yeah, that, that's a close one. That's a really close one. And uh, I'll tell you, Camacho, it's a, a nice pitch. Pitching that with Forrest. And uh, I haven't seen that duo too much. Machado getting a pitch. And boy, he's able to catch the edge. Almost get the first down for the Marauders. Third and four now. Block under two minutes at uh, about 140. Ming is trying to figure out how to execute and get a, another play underway here. Senna is going to come in. Bring the play in. Mingus will go line up. Sano will take the receiver position to the near side. Nope, that's going to be Dixon. Sen is in motion, and we have movement, and uh, that is going to go, I think, against Mingus. Yeah, most certainly will, and I know Dixon got a head start on that one, but I don't think that was who was on. I saw some movement on the line of scrimmage, too, so Marauders just kind of shooting themselves in the foot there. Third and short, and Chote. now it's going to be third and long. Choate hit himself in the helmet, so I wonder if he was blaming himself, whether it was called on him or not. I've been there, done that before. One minute left to go. Senna out, Machado back in. Dixon the receiver to the near side. Camacho over center, there's the snap and Camacho comes out, looks to throw, throws the ball and he throws it away. So that's gonna bring up a fourth down for the Mingus Marauders. Fourth and nine from their own 41 yard line. When I, I don't even know if the, it's a contemplation here or not. Whether you punt it or go for it. Looks like Dirk Alec's going to line up for the punt. And they're about 15 seconds away from being a total of seven quarters with no points in the region. Don't believe that Mingus even has to get this play off. And it looks like they're going to, oh, they do get it off right at the buzzer. They do punt it, and it is taken at about the 20-yard line. Coming back the other way are the Coconino Panthers. Runs right up the middle, and Mingus will contain it somewhere around the 40, 42-yard line. So how about that? Coconino gets the ball back. Now they're going to switch sides of the field. And fourth quarter is coming up. We'll take a break here from Coconino High School. We'll be back in one minute. <laughs> People often refer to Larry Green Chevrolet as the people place. Keeping that reputation is a priority in the community and with every customer that comes through the door. Larry Green Chevrolet, we're better and we'll prove it. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van or SUV, you'll find our selection extensive and the sales team professional and courteous. Visit Larry Green Chevrolet just off Highway 260 next to Walmart or LarryGreenChevrolet.com. Call Rick or Scott Stokes at Sun Country Custom Woodworks about cabinets for every purpose and every budget. Sun Country Custom Woodworks can custom build cabinets for your dream kitchen or bath, adding tremendous value to your home. Organize the garage and store stuff right with a call to Sun Country. And ask about money-saving options, including modular cabinet choices. Well, Klaus takes over at quarterback and hands it off and going up the middle and tackled by the ball and then by the shoulder is number 10 out there. That's going to be Mickelson. Decent gain of about uh, five or six. A uh, flag coming in at the 
in the secondary of the Marauders there. So let's see what that's going to be as they talk it over. They're waving it off. They're going to reset the ball out there at the 49-yard line. So five yards for Mickelson. He's got 60 yards in the game. 143 yards on the ground here for Coconino. And clock continues to roll. Fourth quarter action, 46-0. The Panthers on top. Klaus in at quarterback, takes the snap, hands it off, and there goes Mickelson. Mickelson up the middle, has a first down, keeps the <coughs> legs rolling, and the flag comes in. I wonder if that's going to be a face mask. Yeah, in the vicinity of it, I thought I saw a little bit of a face mask there, so let's see. That's just a really tough run by Mickelson. My goodness gracious, it, it, three marauders on him and he's still just tossing and turning, moving his shoulder side and side to get out of it. And that's exactly what it's gonna be, a face mask. That's gonna add 15 more yards for Klaus, the uh, new quarterback coming in for the Panthers. Sixth penalty for the Mingus Marauders, 53 yards. Third quarter action, Bradshaw up over Prescott, 20 to 14. Oh, pardon me, fourth quarter action, Bradshaw up 20 to 14 over Prescott. Prescott tied it up with 369 left to go in quarter number three. Now in the fourth quarter, Bradshaw takes a 20 to 14 lead. Spread formation. This has been a passing situation and they are going to run it. Mickelson gobbled up at the line of scrimmage. Eat him up, yum. Yeah, the scrum was only a two or three man scrum there at the end of that play. And the Panthers are loving it because that's just taking the clock down. Under 10 and a half left to go, fourth quarter action. Wind going from right to left across your radio dial. And it is a little bit of a cool one. Yeah, it's definitely chilling up. It's got to be uh, in the 40s up here in Flagstaff. It's 52 degrees at kickoff. Oh, yeah, we're definitely in the 40s, mid-40s for sure. One receipt, or pardon me, one back to either side, and it's going to be a pitch to the outside, and Mingus will cover that up. I think I saw Jones in on that tackle. Yeah, most certainly Jones been such a great athlete uh, all season long for the Marauders. Got some big size to him. Nick Choate in there on that one too. Isaiah Latham, good luck trying to run the ball to the right side where Nick Choate and Isaiah Latham are. Some big guys and what well, Glassman. I, I mean, not to take any away from Curtis. He's had a heck of a night so far too. Third down and eight from right around the red zone. Ball sits right at the 20 yard line. 9.20 left to go, fourth quarter. 46 0. Coconino on top. Two receivers to the top side. We'll see if Klaus tries to put the ball up. Puts a man in motion, and there is motion in all sorts of places. I think everybody went there except the center. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I may have been guilty of that once or twice where you think it's a different snap count. And, uh, you were the wrong one. <laughs> you said go on me, right? <laughs> you used to have Tony Vaca yelling me, snap the ball. It's, <laughs> it's way too late. The flag's already out. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's fortunate for the Marauders is that'll back up the Panthers and make it a, a third and long for what has got to be some of the Panthers' younger guys in there. Third and 13. Ming is trying to get their first stop here in the game. Quarterback takes the snap, looks to throw, throws the ball, has a man, and it is going to be covered up. So Mingus brings up fourth down. Good tackle on the far side out there by uh, Dirkelec, and they keep the play in front of them. Uh, gains about eight, and I, I got to imagine they're going to go for it. Yeah, I would think so. I don't think they're going to go for the field goal as we uh, saw Coconino take a knee on the last two-point conversion. So... I think that's a, a sportsmanship or, and or you don't want to kick it. Uh, so, yeah, I think we're going to see Coconino go for it here. I think their kicker is out, their primary kicker. So they were going to do Hunter Navarro as their place kicker out here. But they're going to go for it on fourth and six. 
from inside the 20 yard line of the Mingus Marauders. There's the snap, handoff, Mickelson, right side, weaves, dives, bombs, and oh my goodness, what a throw of that flag. I'm not sure if Mingus actually stopped it short or not, but that was, that was a good solid 20 yard, 22 yard throw out there by the uh, back judge. This crew should be given the clinic on how to throw them. And it is going to be a block in the back against uh, the Coconino squad. Does stop the clock at 7.42 left to go here in the fourth quarter. That is going to br bring it back and make it fourth down and about 14. And the ball sits outside the 25-yard line, 26-yard line. Klaus comes over to the sideline. Coach says, we're not kicking. He goes, I figured that. We haven't kicked so far. <laughs> right, right. The Marauders real fortunate because on that last fourth down, Coconino had it. And the penalty brings him back. Two receivers near side. This has definitely been a throwing situation here. Klaus takes a snap, steps back, looks to throw, has a little bit of pressure, runs way back. Another flag out there. Oh, another flag should be thrown for a block. And uh, there we get the tackle. Mingus will get the ball back, but there are flags. There are litter all over the place. There was a flag thrown for a hold, and then I think there was a flag thrown for a uh, illegal block a blindside block in that play. There is just so much to unwrap out of this one. Seven minutes exactly left to go in the fourth quarter. Yeah, and it looks like the, the refs might be canceling these out. They were just signaling over to a head-to-head -head contact and a illegal block, and both are going to be declined, and Mingus is going to get the ball. Interesting. So that worked out in the Marauders' favor, and Coconino still has their 46 nothing lead right now, and boy, how crucial is this? It's, it's really time to put a nice drive together, execute well. The Marauders did that the first couple drives they had it, and time to find the end zone and get some points. So the ball sits at the... 24-yard line of the Mingus Marauders. They got 76 yards to go to get some pride back here. Camacho in shotgun, takes it, comes to the near side, looks to throw, throws, has a man, and it is caught. Should be a first down. I think that's Bruin out there with the catch. Nope, they're gonna, are they going to say that he caught it or no? Looks like uh, they're going to say it was incomplete, and that's going to come back. And I'll tell you what, uh, got to call it out when I see it. Big Nick Choate out there with another pancake. And boy, I think he got away with one there because Big Nick Choate was laying on his defender for a few seconds, making sure he wasn't going to get up, make a play. I love it when the big guys do that. Well, you just get tired. And the guy underneath you might yeah. be comfortable. <laughs> Second and 10 from the 24. Camacho takes the snap, throws the screen far side. Durkalek's got a little bit of room, gets a block, and he will jut himself out of bounds somewhere around the 30-yard line. Might pick up six. And even though we went out of bounds, that will not stop the clock. A continuous clock after 42 points, and Coconino is up by 46. Well, this is, down. Gonna, this is going to make Durkalek really unique because a quarterback that now has three receptions in the game, that's, that's kind of unusual. Shotgun snap, Camacho comes to the near side, looks, has a man. It's Machado, Machado, first down, just short of the 40-yard line, and that's going to be enough to move the chains. Another 12 yards out there for Machado. Yeah, really, really nice play, and love to see the chemistry building between Camacho and his wide receivers. Yeah, we've seen some air success from the Marauders tonight. Not, not near as much as the Panthers, but nonetheless, it's there. Camacho is showing a lot of promise at quarterback. Well, Mingus is certainly practicing the pass on, on this drive. 39-yard line, there's the snap, and uh, Bruin will cut it inside, tries to get back to the outside, almost gets tackled by the ball, and will pick up about five. 
And it looks like maybe Bruin lost it right at the tail end of that play, but able to fall on top of it. And that'll keep the Marauders moving downfield as we get close to four minutes left in the game. The Marauders really, really trying to get some points on the board. Playing for pride nonetheless. Line of scrimmage just past the Mingus Marauder 45 yard line. 4.06 left to go. Shotgun situation here for Camacho. Scott Machado on the inside. There's the snap, comes to the near side. Ooh, he's got pressure. Throws it down, he's got Durkalek. Durkalek has the reception, trying to get to the outside. Doesn't need to get out of bounds, but does pick up the first down here at the 45 yard line. Yeah, nice job by the Marauders moving downfield. Then again out there, Camacho looking sharp. And you can see in the back of that play, Big Nick Jones, and another pancake block. He's having some great blocks tonight. You're going to have to pull some of those for your highlight reel, Nick. So first down and 10. 10 yard pass play out there to Durkaluk. Camacho's got his troops in line. Three receivers to the top side. He goes to the near, far side. Throws, has a man cutting back up underneath. And that might be Jones. Jones stretching for as much as he can possibly get, but he'll pick up seven. Yeah, really like the way Camacho's finding himself in the pocket back there. Uh, dropping back for a pass. You're going to see the replay here. He just looks really comfortable as a quarterback. Really does. Scampers out fast, looks, as, looks at his options, and makes a quick decision. Third reception out there by Jones. And a pile up close to the first down, but just short. Getting up off the bottom of the pile is uh, Arnado. Arnado's first rush here in the second half, and it looks like Mingus calls timeout with 2.17 left to go. We're going to take a break. We'll take a break with them. We'll return right after this. Yavapai College has many degree and certificate programs to get you on track to a rewarding, well-paying career in a variety of industries such as healthcare, manufacturing, construction, elementary education, and art. Fall semester starts on August 15th, so there's still time to register. Visit us online today at yc.edu slash admission to connect with your future career. And back here, here it is, third and one. Mingus with their best drive here. In the second half, needs the first down, handoff, Rulin wavers his way through, keeps the legs rolling, he will pick up the first down, he needed one, got four. That'll move the chains, but the clock stops very briefly while they move the chains. Yeah, that's nope, a great Mingus job. called another timeout, how about that? Really thinking about it, trying to make the best of these plays here to get some points on the board. and. Boy, Jackie, really, I, I kind of like this. Uh, I like Montebias using these timeouts to get his offense focused, get some, get downfield, and get some points on the board. They are absolutely meaningless. You can't take the timeouts home with you on the bus. Right. Right? Right. They don't get you a bag of chips. Exactly. At the end of the season, you don't get, you know, like four more offensive points for saving them. If you got to get bags of chips or timeouts, <laughs> I tell you, your lineman would never let you call timeouts. <laughs> I want the family size. <laughs> yeah, family size. Three receivers to the near side, one to the top, one back in the backfield. For Camacho out of shotgun. Line of scrimmage is at the 33-yard line. Camacho, ooh, he's got to move to avoid a would-be tackle. He throws it, and now we're going to have flags flying everywhere. He threw it toward a potential receiver, but I think the potential receiver was going to be an offensive lineman, which would make an illegal touching call, yes? Yes, unfortunately, us big guys cannot catch the ball and run with it, unless it was fumbled, but that was not a fumble. 
think uh, Junior Hernandez out there like, why are you throwing that to me, man? I don't, I don't know what to do with this thing. You, know, you were a white shirt, dude. I mean, <laughs> yeah, Camacho's just like, hey, take it and go. Now, an offensive lineman, now, how many opportunities do, does an offensive lineman have to catch a pass? It has to be off a of deflection, yes? It's usually that, uh, no, it's usually the extra tackle that you see. A lot of colleges will do that, where they'll bring in an extra tackle uh, in the tight end position almost, and you'll see the big guys run out. They'll typically run a slant until they're out of breath, and then uh, it's awesome seeing them celebrate in the end zone. First, oh, second down. You lose the down, of course. Second down and about 20 now for the Mingus Marauders. Camacho over center. Puts Dixon in motion, comes to the near side. Has room to run. He's going to tuck it and run. He's got a first down and more inside the 10 or inside the 20, down to about the 15 yard line. A buck 45 on the clock, and they set the ball here at the uh, 16 yard line. And I really like the athleticism there. Camacho, way to use your legs on that. That's just an outstanding play. He's got no one downfield. Coconino's giving him tough coverage to throw to, so he just takes off and does it himself. 34 yards on it. Now he's looking to pass. Passes to the near side, and Brulin gets tackled immediately. The clock continues to roll. One-yard gain. That's uh, we're just over a minute now. Looks like Mingus will call another last timeout. timeout. Yeah, and really think this one over. We're going to keep it here. Meanwhile, Camacho is actually um, five for five for his last five. How about that? Yeah, great statistics and. I mentioned this earlier, we'll talk about it in the post game, but Camacho looks very comfortable back there, especially when he's deep in the pocket. Uh, I, I like how he looks through his options really, really fast, and he's made some smart plays at quarterback tonight. Uh, not to take anything away from Dirkolek. Dirkolek able to make those fast choices too, typically just takes off on his feet because he likes to use that, that shifty athleticism he's got. Uh, but no, nonetheless, Camacho's having a, a good night so far. Quarterback, I know it's not going the Marauders way, um, but going into the future, he's getting his reps in right now. 119 left to go on the clock. First or second and nine from the 15 yard line. So for all practical purposes, especially since Mingus can't stop the clock, they may have three or four plays and need to pretty much go for the end zone here at this point. Camacho, two receivers to the top, takes the snap, looks to roll, throws the ball into traffic and it is incomplete. No flags on the play, so they're gonna have to kind of hustle back and try to rewind this one. And no more timeouts either. So nope. Camacho, good look there. Coconino Panther is just good coverage on that. Really good coverage. I think Coconino knows, obviously, Mingus is calling the timeouts. They're trying to get into the end zone. So good coverage by Coconino there. First incomplete pass here. Camacho is going to run it. He's got room. He's got a blocker out there. Cuts to the outside, to the end zone, and in! And Camacho breaks the zero off the board. A 15-yard rush with 43 seconds left to go in the game, and Mingus gets on the board. How about that? Use your timeouts, Coach Montebias, and get your quarterback in the end zone. He's feeling it. And that's a, uh, a really, really, really good way to end a bad game for the Marauders. As Camacho finds himself some pay dirt. On the run, I love how he called out his blocks, too. Well, he had Dirkleck out there and started pointing. Chose to go to the outside. Mingus is going to set it up to go for the extra point here. Hernandez with the extra point. It's going to be a fake. And the throw for the two-point conversion out to Dixon is good. And Mingus gets the two-point conversion, 46-8. to eight, And that'll stop the continuous clock because it's less than 42 points. Yeah, and it's just an awesome two-point conversion play. Love the fake PAT. We're going to take a quick break. Mingus will do a kickoff when we return here at Coconino High School after this. All Price Insurance on Main Street in Cottonwood is your local insurance provider for personal and commercial insurance. 
Call and compare 23 insurance companies for home, health, auto, RV, motorcycle, boat, or ATV. Specialty insurance and insurance bonds are no problem at All Price Insurance. Call or visit All Price Insurance today. Well, so far here, Nick, Mingus has actually outscored Coconino in the second half, eight to six. <laughs> really, really positive statistic there, Jackie. I'm trying. I love the outlook, and yeah, for a game that obviously didn't go the Marauders' way, uh, a, a really good ending to it. So, an onside kick is ensuing, and uh, Mingus has a chance for it, but does not get it. It is covered up out there. And it looks like Quinn might have uh, covered it up. Nope, that's going to be Patton that covers it up. And the Coconino Panthers only have to kneel down. Mingus, with no timeouts, cannot stop it. So I believe two kneel downs, and uh, this one should be in the books. But, but, Mingus has not gotten shut out for eight quarters in a row. And on top of that, Mingus outscored Coconino in the second half. And really a huge accolade, just getting points on the board. You, you, could, you did not want to go two games in your region play without scoring a point. That's the first knee here for homecoming. Well, the Panthers are going to be... They're, they're going to be successful here. They're going to win tonight, of course, 46 to 8. However, their record is going to go to 3 and 4 on the season. They came in 2 and 4. The Mingus Marauders were 4 and 2. So they are going to drop to 4 and 3. Now, Mingus has got a rebound against the Flagstaff Eagles coming up uh, at homecoming next Friday night. Last we have heard, Bradshaw was still leading. Prescott in the fourth quarter by a score of 40 to 14. And they're not even gonna do another staff. How about that? That is game, ladies and gentlemen. The Gettles High Desert Mechanical. Post-game show coming up. Coconino victorious 46 to 8. We'll return to Coconino High School after this. Choose the region's most comprehensive heart program. Choose care close to home. Choose world-class surgeons. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Choose precision. Choose innovation. Choose robotic-assisted knee and hip replacement. Choose Northern Arizona Healthcare. Yavapai College has many degree and certificate programs to get you on track to a rewarding, well-paying career in a variety of industries such as healthcare, manufacturing, construction, elementary education, and art. Fall semester starts on August 15th, so there's still time to register. Visit us online today at yc.edu slash admission to connect with your future career. For 30 years, Roxu Screen Printers have provided Northern Arizona with clean, crisp, quality screen printing. They work with you to make the right choices in creating the right artwork and message to put forth your best image. Choose from brand name products and even fashion forward designs, including caps, tees, sweatshirts, polos, and jackets. Make Roxu your choice for work in sports uniforms, workwear, resort wear, and more. Find out more at ROKZUTEES.com. Roxu Screen Printers in Cottonwood, where clothing comes to rock. I'm Chris. And I'm Tandy, owners of Taylor Waste. We're homegrown in the Verde Valley and nearly your last local choice. We want to be your first choice for residential and small business garbage service. Get a free month service when you make the switch to Taylor Waste. And enjoy monthly service as low as $16 per month. Visit TaylorWaste.com for more information. Or to start service, call Taylor Waste at 649-2662. Taylor Waste, service tailored to your needs. People often refer to Larry Green Chevrolet as the people place. Keeping that reputation is a priority in the community and with every customer that comes through the door. Larry Green Chevrolet, we're better and we'll prove it. If you're in the market for a new or pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, you'll find our selection extensive and the sales team professional and courteous. 
Visit Larry Green Chevrolet just off Highway 260 next to Walmart or LarryGreenChevrolet.com. What a fickle game high school football is, is it not? Yeah, seriously. Well, the final score here tonight, Coconino wins over the Mingus Marauders by a score of 46 to eight here at homecoming for the Coconino Panthers. Um, I, I, well, it was 40 to nothing at halftime. I'm not gonna go through that again. Third quarter, five minutes and 13 seconds left to go, a four yard run by Mickelson, and then uh, no extra point attempt or two point conversion attempt. They just took a knee on it, made it 46 to nothing, and took Mingus all the way through the fourth quarter, 43 seconds left to go and Camacho finally found the end zone from 15 yards out on the uh, keeper and then the two point conversion Durklek to uh, Dixon makes it 46 to 8 and Mingus gets some pride points and that's going to be hugely important as they uh, move in to uh, homecoming next week so inviting everybody to come out would love to see as many people out at Mingus as we've seen out here tonight at Coconino uh, for homecoming and and uh, welcome in the uh, Flagstaff Eagles and see if Mingus can turn around their Grand Canyon region woes here in 2022. Yeah against the Flagstaff Eagles, Eagles it's going to be a big rebound and Marauders got to do some uh, thankful we got the eight points tonight. Uh, where Camacho was able to find the end zone. And boy, just to kind of touch on that last point, uh, I love the positive outlook on, you know, we outscored the Coconino Panthers in the second half. And uh, Coconino obviously didn't even have to score that second half. But uh, nonetheless, great coaching. Coach Montebias calling those timeouts on the last drive with a few minutes to go. He knows the clock's running because the score. Um, I really like that decision. He's getting his offense focused. You got to focus on what you can do. You can't just hang your head low and, and get out of here. You want to score points. And they executed really, really well there on that last drive. I agree. And overcame some penalties and everything else to go along with it. Threw the ball pretty well. Five for five at one particular point in that drive was Camacho throwing the ball. Taking a look at the uh, victorious uh, squad from Coconino. Well, uh, let's see. We had two pretty decent receivers out here tonight. Reagan ended up with three receptions for 69 yards. Uh, Klaus had two receptions for 62 yards and a touchdown. On the ground, the leading uh, rushers in the game were uh, Quinn Mickelson who had 12 carries for 74 yards including a touchdown and uh, then uh, the other uh, rusher for Coconino was going to be Riker Patton who ends up with seven carries and uh, 68 yards also had a touchdown the the story out here is Enoch Watson who ended the first half nine for nine two touchdowns, 217 yards, ended up in the second half only going one for four for 20 yards, but still ends up with 237 yards, ends up 10 for 13, and two touchdowns. That's going to that's gonna raise his quarterback rating. He will be over 100 coming up next week. Seriously, and that's he's already at the 97 quarterback rating, and Enoch Watson had himself a night tonight, and I mean, it really goes to show that Coconino's got a lot of different weapons. I mean, Coconino's main rusher, who they've used all season long as a battering ram, last season two, Cooper French, was out after the very first drive. It was almost like, I think it was like the second play he was running the ball. Right. Um, so Marauders caught a break with him leaving the game. Hopefully he's going to be okay in return uh, for Coconino. But yeah, I mean, the Panthers able to get it done without their top weapon. And Enoch Watson picked up any bag that was left on the sidelines from that. Oh, no doubt. Um, uh, for the Mingus Marauders, uh, Camacho ends up with 79 yards in the air as he completes three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight for 18, 79 yards. Uh, one interception thrown on the ground. The Mingus Marauders had 127 yards of total uh, rushes, or I say rushing yards, 22 of them coming from Durkalek. Uh, Mikai Arnado ends up with uh, 19 yards on just eight carries here tonight. Brulin with six carries and 32 yards. 
And uh, Camacho ends up leaving all Mingus Marauder rushers out here as he has three carries for 49 yards and the only Mingus Marauder touchdown. So Coconino holds the Mingus Marauders to under 200, just over 200 yards, like 206 yards in the game. And uh, that's a... Uh, Kind of the, pretty much the same thing that uh, Bradshaw did it against Mingus last uh, last week. So uh, now uh, Mingus Marauders are going to have to figure out a way to figure it out, come back, and uh, during the course of uh, homecoming, uh, find a way to come back against the Flagstaff Eagles. I think that is certainly doable. Yeah, I think so too, and especially when you look at the first couple drives for the Marauders tonight. I mean, and I harped on that in the halftime show because, I mean, really, if you take those turnovers away and the Marauders continue to drive the ball, well, that means that we're not getting shut out, right? We put some points on the board and it could be a close game. So, yeah, anything can really happen. Obviously, it went the way of Coconino big time tonight. Um, the Marauders have got to capitalize and obviously clean up those turnovers. Certainly so. Fumble and an interception. Both of them on drives where Mingus uh, was was going in the in the first quarter, going in the right direction, mm -hmm. certainly. But nonetheless, the Mingus Marauders fall here tonight by a score of 46 to 8. Um, other Grand Canyon region uh, scores, what do we know out there? We know Apache Junction is leading Lee Williams in the fourth quarter, 45 to 12. Uh, the only thing about that is uh, Lee Williams beat Coconino. <laughs> and Coconino beat Apache Junction. So it's all over the place. High school football, it's really who's gonna play the best the best game on any given day. So uh, yeah, Lee Williams getting handled right now by Apache Junction, which will probably move uh, Apache Junction up a few more spaces after this. And I'd imagine Coconino is gonna move up nicely after this big win against Mingus. No, I, I believe they, they will. Uh, not only that, but uh, we have the inside track to the Grand Canyon region and it is held by Coach Young and the Brad Shaw Bears, a 20 to 14 victory over Prescott here tonight, and the Badgers certainly give the uh, the Bears the inside track to the Grand Canyon region. Yeah, most certainly, and congratulations to Bradshaw Mountain, uh, Coach Bob Young, and that staff over there. They've done a great job. Obviously, we saw Bradshaw last week, and they handled us. That's a, a team that's playoff tested, battle ready, um, and it looks like they're they're going through the Grand Canyon region tougher than the nails. Well, both of those squads still have to play this Coconino Panthers yep. team. So uh, I have a feeling that Co Coconino wants to throw their name in the hat as well. As, uh, you know, they've got one loss in the Grand Canyon region so far. Now does, uh, so does Br um, Prescott at this point. And the Mings Marauders fall to 0-2 in the Grand Canyon region. Well, the big comeback has got to be next week against the Flagstaff Eagles. Please come out and join us. In the meantime, and if you are uh, out and about, I'm going to start off at uh, Blazing M Ranch coming up tomorrow morning for the Alzheimer's Walk, the Verde Valley Alzheimer's Walk. It gets underway at 8. I think they start walking at 9, and I will play host for that one. And then I'll be back out at Blazing M the following weekend for the final weekend of uh, Fall Fest at the Blazing M Ranch in Cottonwood. Well, we're going to try to pack up and get out of here before it, you know, like gets to negative 140 degrees here in Flagstaff. <laughs> I'm Jackie Bessler. This is Nick Yatsenko. Once again, the Mingus Marauders fall 46 to 8. We will bid you a good night and look forward to seeing you next Friday night at home for homecoming against the Flagstaff Eagles. This has been the Post Game Report brought to you by Gettles High Desert Mechanical Heating, AC, and Plumbing Specialist online at GettlesHDM.com. Starting in the late 1920s, Grandpa Gettle and his brothers laid the groundwork for what would become a family legacy. Almost 100 years and 100 patents later, Gettle's High Desert Mechanical continues to raise the bar of quality heating, cooling, and plumbing products and services in the Verde Valley. Call Gettle's High Desert Mechanical Heating, Air Conditioning, and Plumbing at 567-2200 or online at Gettle'sHDM.com. Providing solutions for your comfort. Don't settle. Get Gettle's and go Marauders. This has been a presentation of Yavapai Broadcasting Sports. Any rebroadcast or use of this broadcast without written permission from Mingus Union High School or Yavapai Broadcasting is expressly prohibited. Mingus Marauder Football is brought to you by Jones Ford Verde Valley, Arizona's best since 1970. State Farm Insurance, Jennifer Griffin. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Taylor Waste. 
service tailored to your needs. Rock Zoo Screen Printing, where clothing comes to rock. Longfellow Excavating, we dig your ideas. And Northern Arizona Healthcare, improving health, improving people. Your 2022 Mingus Broader Football is also brought to you by these fine businesses. Reese's Tire and Automotive Tire Pros, three generations here to serve you. Larry Green Chevrolet, the people place. All price insurance. Call 634-2311 to get your quote. Gettles High Desert Mechanical, heating, cooling, and plumbing. Don't settle, get Gettles. Your neighborhood Rice Accounting and Jackson Hewitt Tax Services. Sun Country Custom Woodworks, serving all of Northern Arizona with commercial and residential custom cabinets. And Yavapai College, you can, we can, together. Tune in for details on the next Mingus Marauders game on Verde Valley TV and KYBC.